set up here and then uh Wes will be joining us shortly. He's actually streaming himself on Twitch. If you'd rather watch that, he's on the Chad Follett 76 podcast stream. Let's see. Let's bring up some chat windows. Uh, let's see here. I feel like this is, uh, I feel like first time streaming right now. I can't find anything that I, now that I need it. <laughs> all right, let's try studio. Where did I do? I set all this stuff up so far in advance. I've never done this before where I set it up like a week in advance where is my streaming page live control room there it is never even seen this screen hey foxel hey oscar how are you guys doing all right now let me see okay so i've got chat up Let's see, King Gas streaming on Twitch. I'll just watch myself live. All right, Techman's open. Hello, how are you? All right, let's see. How do I? Where do I pop out chat here? Pop out chat. There it is. One of these days, I'm going to find a piece of software that will correctly merge all of these chats together. Slangel, hello. It would be uh, it would be really helpful. I'm sure somebody has to make that, right? There's got to be other streamers who use such a software where it's like, because you want something that not only, yeah, Sturgis Gath is ready, and so is Mo, aka Wes. Um, we uh, uh, there's got to be like a central chat software that people can go to. Now, what we did today and what we're gonna do on uh, uh, Sunday is we have Discord is ho I'm sorry Discord Nexus is hosting on their Discord channel um, a single chat room so that way everybody can be there since Sunday there's going to be a dozen of us streaming so this will be that way everybody can have a central spot to talk and be like hey so and so is doing this on this channel since obviously we can't watch all 12 simultaneously um, all right and then I'm trying to get some stuff going so I set up the first poll on Tiltify and basically what we're going to do tonight, and uh, we'll go over this again once uh, Wes joins us, which will be in about 10 minutes. Um, basically, we're going to have a series of elements of the mod we're going to build on Sunday, and you guys can uh, vote with your dollars. So obviously all the money goes to the charity, uh, but uh, it's you know one dollar, one vote. And uh, so if you vote $20 toward one thing, then that, vote, that uh, poll will get uh, kind of 20 votes toward that particular thing you chose. So we'll be able to slowly craft the mod here. I've got a whole bunch of polls queued up we can do um and then but i want to i want to have a have a little chat with wes first before i start enabling them all uh see if he's got any any thoughts on the various ones if there's any any poll options we should add to them and then i'll start enabling them as we go so we can uh we can figure out this mod but uh it should be pretty cool we're gonna have we've got on the squad uh, a bunch of the sims elements team like cobus and sagittarius uh, we've got Eric Amber Studios is going to do our quest icons, so we're going to build like a voiced quest mod, and then we've got Nero is going to do some armor, uh, Neher is going to do a weapon, Eleonora is going to do a player home, Unoctium is going to turn our quest character into a companion, and then who else do we have on the squad? Atalino is going to be uh, helping me in the background with uh, all the various tasks that go in and, and possibly getting involved with uh, uh, setting up the mod with SAG. Also going to be doing, he's also going to be doing a lot of writing with Anactium. So we've got, we've got a nice team assembled here. So it should be, uh, should be pretty entertaining. The, uh, hopefully the mod comes out good so you guys can actually play it all the way through. But that's what, that, that's what Gopher is going to be doing at the end of the Sunday stream is proving that we did good and uh, playing it live on camera. Um, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a hectic, exciting day on Sunday. So I hope you guys will, will join us to watch and cheer us on. Cause that's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of like that, those speed modding streams I've done, but dialed to 15 <laughs> because we've got so many people involved that have never worked together. And we're trying to do like a full release mod in that day, as opposed to, and with like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try and push it like sag and i know how far we could take it in three and a half hours and now it's gonna be like all right what can we how can we scale that to 12 and involve more people it's gonna be interesting oscar fry is a boston commonwealth wasteland resident i do not recognize this dollar you speak of as legal tender i'll have to pay you in caps uh well if you can get tiltify to take caps please more power to you all currency i it would be nice if it were welcome 
Okay, now I have, so I have a, um, so I haven't coordinated exactly how I'm connecting with Wes yet. I think he's gonna dial me on Discord and I have that ready to go, but he's still in the middle of a stream. So for now, we're just gonna chat about the, uh, we're gonna talk about Sim Settlements actually, what we're gonna talk about. Did any of you guys uh, watch Eleonora play uh, Sim Settlements 2 for the first time? She started it yesterday and has done some more today. It's pretty, it's always entertaining to me watch somebody new play the mod because inevitably like they they hit tons of little hiccups with things that i'm like i thought we fixed that so like yesterday i was watching her and i got super stressed out about it and so today i'm like i can't i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna watch it again um but uh it's also it's also entertaining and and helpful like even though it's stressful to be like oh i fixed that bug it's like inspiring to be like all right let's make sure those bugs are on our on our hit list so that we uh take them out a, as soon as possible uh, all right. Oh, Eleanor's still playing right now. Okay, cool. Hopefully she makes it through all the way to the end. Like I, I, I highly doubt she makes it through the whole HQ quests because they're, um, although maybe because now we have, we, we simplified the difficulty quite a bit. Um, is Gopher going to play SS2? So I believe Gopher, we, we actually chatted about this this morning. Uh, Gopher is going to play, but not on stream. I think Gopher is going to play SS2, just like something fun to do. He just wants to try it out and actually have like, because once in a while, people who stream the games like to just play a game for themselves. Um, but I think he told me his schedule, and I won't, I won't spoil for him his schedule of like what he's going to be playing for the rest of the year. And so it was just a lack of uh, lack of time for an SS2 playthrough, given how many hours it takes. I mean, if playing a full playthrough of SS2, if you do all the building and stuff, I mean, it's probably like a, a 40 hour plus playthrough, um, and especially once you factor in chapter three. Uh, a link to Ellie, I'm sure. Let me see if I got one handy. I actually probably have one down in my because uh, I've got the the chat team thing set up. Uh, let's see here. Where is this? Because I know you guys can't paste in the chat, but I can. All right, here we go. Got a link. I will paste that below. So those of you guys who like to have uh, multiple screens at once going. Uh, there you go, Oscar. Hello, Sarek. Hey, Karvak. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Um, I hope, uh, hope you guys are excited for Sunday. Because I am... Uh, I'm ready to see what we can pull together. This is actually one of those events where if it works out, I, this feels like it could be like a, a awesome regular event, like a little mod jam. Because I always, every time I see the big game jams, like the uh, the Game Maker's Toolkit and the Brackies, want to get super jealous that we don't really have anything in the Bethesda mod community that's equivalent, other than the I believe Nexus or somebody in the Nexus community hosts a Morrowind mod jam. I think they do it every year. But, uh, but yeah, we don't have anything equivalent. And it seems like it'd be a lot of fun. Because you could actually, you could put together a pretty decent mod in 48 hours, which is how long most jams are. Uh, but we're doing it accelerated because I have I don't have 48 hours to jam right now. Um, after, S after Chapter 3 comes out, then doing a 48 hour won't be more realistic. But right now, uh, I can't I can't commit that. Although I'm probably, when, uh, when it comes to all the organization time and everything for the charity, probably going to end up being 48 hours anyway. But it would be uh, amplified that much more if we were doing uh, uh, the charity, the, a 48 hour game jam plus all the, all the coordination. I'm like simultaneously here bopping back and forth between watching Wes's. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Chef. I might have to mute that sound effect for myself just so that I don't get derailed talking to Wes this whole time because it still makes me chuckle every single time somebody follows. So get your follows out now. Let's uh, let's trigger all those. Cyvirus, hello, sir. Yeah, I've got... Uh, I, I am expecting a call shortly. And in the meantime, we're just going to ramble. So is everybody, everybody here, I actually, what, what's interesting about uh, this event and Sunday's event is it won't necessarily all be Sim Settlements fans tuning in because uh, I think uh, some folks, there's going to be West Johnson fans here and uh, we've been advertising about the, both the events on just the Nexus channel so that folks who just like to mod who uh, can come join us. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, so if you're, if you're not familiar with me, 
I'm the Sim Settlements guy. Erica, hello. Midnight and tired. You don't want to miss this. Fantastic. Yeah, you gotta you gotta start preparing for what you're gonna have to make. That's that's my goal after this, depending on how long this goes. Um, for those of you guys who are in the charity team, I'll probably bop down into charity voice right afterward, after we end the stream, and uh, we can we can talk about all the the polls the poll results and see kind of what we're gonna be building because it's kind of like the uh, the the chat and the and the donation polls are gonna drive what we end up making on Sunday. So I've got the first, if anyone wants, the first poll I have up is, uh, let me see, what is it? What did I put up there? I put, because I, I feel like I have a bunch of polls set up for the various things we're going to make. Um, and the first thing I want to solve <laughs> is the story. <laughs> the, old, the, the old fart. Fantastic. Thank you for the follow. Uh, so the, uh, the first thing I want to sort is... Oh, do we got a raid party coming in? <laughs> Whoa, here it comes. <laughs> Eleonora, thank you. Marcus Jones, bro, thank you for the follow. Welcome, everybody. I uh, I am I stream all the time, but I am a uh, I am <laughs> new to the <laughs> I'm new to like the proper streaming with raids and alerts and all this some fun, fun stuff. Al Hanalasa, thank you for the follow. Surik, thank you for the follow. Keegs eight one nine, thank you for the follow. And then we're about to get blasted with. <laughs> for those guys who don't know what the hell that is, that is. Uh, the Ron from uh, some sources. It's actually Cyrus, the voice actor. He he did that during a charity stream we did before, <laughs> and it makes me chuckle. Uh, so that is why it's our it's our follow noise. So we are raising money today for Voice of Palooza, like a lot of folks are, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we do a good job of that tonight. Hopefully we uh, we get some. We get some funds raised, and you guys point us in a good direction for making a mod, because uh, we are gonna make, we're gonna work together and try and make a mod this weekend on Sunday. We're actually gonna we're actually cheating a little because we are gonna do pre-production off camera on Friday Saturday because I think you can imagine trying to write the story for a quest mod and implement it all, and record voices all simultaneously. A little difficult. We got to kind of do it one after the other. So writing is gonna happen off camera. Uh, but everything else we're going to try and do on camera. So like even uh, even Cobus is going to try and do some voice direction. So you guys can listen to voice actors doing their performances. Oh, we got The Grimner. We've got Ronnie Games All Day. Loleco. C. Dante. Hello. Uh, welcome all. Thank you for the follows. Appreciate it. Let me check on the uh, Chad76 podcast or cast. They're still going. We'll let them. Uh, we'll let them keep going. I told them to. Don't worry about me. I'll. I'll. I'm happy to talk about some settlements while we wait for them. Um, so. Uh, so yeah. Chapter three. Going strong. We. Um, I said this on the last stream that I did. Uh, that it's finally gotten to that point where I just want to play it. Like I don't want to play SS2 without it anymore. Which is to me is a is a good sign. I don't know if anybody else in the dev team feels the same way yet but or the t i would be curious how the testers feel like two large pepperoni i know you you are one of our alpha testers how, how are you feeling are you is chapter three starting to feel like just part of the part of the thing <laughs> is it still a little too rough around the edges for your taste yeah i am multi-streaming you can watch me on youtube or on uh or on twitch your choice Neon Seas, thank you for the follow. Angel Violet, thank you for the subscribe. I don't even know what what does subscribe do. I am not a Twitch person generally. I generally do on uh, on YouTube for most things. What is subscribe? Can anybody can anybody tell me what the difference is? Yeah, wherever you guys want to watch, I got chat up on both. Should have all the alerts set up correctly on both. Ms. Max, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Pop it in over. Let's see. Okay, they're still going strong. This is, you guys are just making me happy, not just because of the follows, but because of that sound. Uh, I love that dumb sound effect so much. Uh, and Octio, thank you for, thank you for the subscribe. Welcome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ready to be feral for the next build quest. Yeah, the next the next build of the alpha will have a lot of quests in it, so it's uh it's close. It's very close. Let's see. A subscribe, no ads, usually bonuses like extra remotes if you want to set them up. Oh, I should set all that up. I only just started doing uh the uh 
what do you call it? The uh, alerts and and like anything <laughs> Twitch related. <laughs> literally two weeks ago, I'm still I'm still fresh and new. Otherwise, I was just a YouTube a YouTube person. So all the all the Twitch stuff I've got. Stuff. But yeah, really the perk right now is you get to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a silly lady. Eighth two thirty five. Bubba Chuck, thank you all for the follows. Welcome to the stream. I will. I'm gonna just keep reiterating um, how this stream is gonna work over and over again. Since we're since I'm filling silence um, tonight, what we're gonna be doing? I'm gonna have a bunch of polls up on Tiltify. If you uh, if you if you were to go to try and donate down in my little box down at the bottom. Uh, if you go down to that little box down there and hit donate as part of the steps, when you hit next, there'll be some polls and you can vote on them and your dollars go like $1 per vote. Um, basically we're going to vote on some, some things about our main character, the setting of our story. You guys are going to get to vote on the type of weapon Nier is going to make, the type of armor that Nero is going to make, the type of player home that Ellie's going to make. And we'll see how they, and then after, the stream is over. Uh, some of us on the team over the next two days are gonna get brainstorming about what we're gonna build, do all the pre-production off camera, and then do all the actual like fun, cool stuff like you know recording voices and making the art and uh, building out the the space for the home and and setting up the quest. That will all happen live on camera all day Sunday, eight to eight. <laughs> Elder one, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Which stream do you link your Discord to, Noctium? Um Do you want the link to the stream for this particular one? So this particular, like the one you're watching to, uh, the one you are, you could actually do. The best thing to link to right now, Noctium, is going to be the SimSettlements.com/charity that has a, uh, a pop up that will play this stream right now. And then, of course, we've got all. I set up that grid of everybody's Twitch and YouTube streams so that on Sunday people can jump around between the different folks. Hopefully, community doesn't crash the Sim Settlements website because that happened has that has happened every time we launched a new chapter. Uh, hopefully, it won't happen for this. I don't think it will. I don't. Th the site I have set up is pretty pretty low low uh, bandwidth, and I have it using a bunch of caching because we learned our lesson from some of the some of the launches. Commander Wolf Gaming, greetings. Any thoughts if you all would get t-shirts made? Uh, t-shirts made for this event or like, I don't know what, what you're at for this. No, no, no plan on that. Um, as far as uh, some Zeldman's t-shirts, we got plenty of those to choose from. We also have some other cool merch because some of our, uh, uh, one of the wonderful artists in the community, Eric Ember Studios, who's joining us on Sunday and is in the audience right now, created these amazing icons of some of our some Zeldman's two characters. And I don't have them up on t-shirts yet, but you can get them on coffee mugs, notebooks, such like that. Cyrus has been immortalizing King Gas channel in the weirdest way possible. I, I think his he all of my uh, alert sounds are currently Cyrus, so I'm gonna have to start paying him royalties for using his voice on that. Uh, what's best in Actium? Uh, most people are follow me on YouTube. Like that's where I I drive ad revenue, and that's where the larger audience is. Like I think I have like 170 followers on Twitch or something because I use it so infrequently. Chris Santuri, thank you for the donation. Here's hoping you all get a ton of donations. Good luck to you all. Thank you so much. That was a super chat. Uh, FYI, I will take any super chats during today and Sunday, and I will don't take that money and donate it myself to the uh, to the Alzheimer's Association. So if you, oh, yeah! you however you guys want to donate, awesome. Um, if you want to if you want to be a part of the polls that we're about to do tonight, definitely do it through the little donate. Uh, link in the uh, Twitch description, or let me make sure it's in the YouTube description. I think I put it there, but I should double check. Let me check my description. Yeah, there's a donate to vote in the description, kind of near the top. It's like third third sentence down in the description on YouTube has a has a link to uh, to vote and do the donation. Or on the Twitch, we've got like a little integrated thing. They're a little little more integrated, a little easier to do there. Popping back up our chat here. I have a. Uh, I think I need a third monitor, to be honest with you guys, with all this. Now that I'm doing the multi-streaming and like having all the fancy stuff up, the the two monitors aren't doing it because I've got, I just stream my monitor. Some people do like the stream your program, um, but because Fallout 4 crashes all the time, I feel like I have to stream my monitor instead. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so then I've got like chat is covering up my stream labs on my other screen. So I can't, I have to like, 
Soupy Poots is now following. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Go for gaming. Coming in with uh, with a big old pile. 127 raiding in. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Olson 2222. Nigel Shadowruth. Thank you for the follow. Welcome guys. We're all we're all hanging tight, waiting for waiting for Wes's stream to uh, finish up so we can get at it. And we're gonna start raising money. In the meantime, you guys do not have to wait for me if you guys want to start voting. I put up the first poll already. You are welcome to uh, to donate toward that to establish our main character archetype. <laughs> I love that sound so much. Uh, sorry for lack of context on that. You know what we need? I need to clip just the part that little that little section where Cyrus does that, and then we can like do at, set up one of those Twitch commands where it's like hashtag What the hell is this? <laughs> they could people can go find out about it. Uh, Selena, I knew Pierogi Dog, Stella Tekendus, Elm Marina, Captain Laserbeam, Kyra Mist. Thank you all. Strawberry Wolves. Oh, here it comes. Just a flood. Thank you all for the follows. Yeah, that would be awesome, Ellie. Let me let me do that. I don't know how to do that, but I'm gonna try and figure it out. I don't know how to make you a mod. Uh, I'm guessing it's in my like the back end. Let's see, moderation. Uh, uh, uh. In <laughs> YouTube, I can just I can just right click on somebody and do it, and that's probably the case in Twitch too. But it's not working right now, so I don't know what what I'm doing wrong. Uh, let's see here. Where is I think I'm going to have to look this up. How I asked ChatGTV. Uh, how do you add a moderator to Twitch? I'm a novice at Twitch, guys. My apologies. Click the hamburger menu, menu then community, then roles manager. Okay, here we go. Let's try that. Uh, community, roles manager. It looks like I've got a... I've got a restream bot as a... Let's see here. Uh, Eleonora. Let's try searching for you. Oh, there's so many. You got a lot of uh, copycats out there. <laughs> Thank you all for the follows. I'll catch up shortly. Uh, oh, Noctum and Dogtooth. Together, ag together again. All right, I just added you. Oh, there we go, Ellie. I just put you a moderator on one of the chats. I don't know about the other one. <laughs> Add guest? No, that's not what we want. Well, I can't figure it out on Twitch. Maybe, maybe somebody will, will, will show me eventually. <laughs> well, let's find. All right, let's catch up on all these. We gotta, we gotta try and be a good streamer here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kitessa, Tetrasera, Sniper Twenty, Elite Commander Wolf Gaming. Thank you guys for the follows. Welcome to the stream. We will get started shortly. Uh, we are waiting on Mr. West Johnson, who is doing another charity right now. And the, the plan was us to roll one into the other. There looks like they're going a little bit long tonight, and that is all right. I got my plate cleared for the next couple hours. Letter Fifty Nine. Thank you for the subscribe. Appreciate it. Welcome. Uh, let's see here. I'm still I'm still digging around the back end of uh, the uh, Twitch thing. Oh, I think I found you. There we go. Check. Got it. Got it. All right, found it. Somebody else had asked, said they were going to be moderator, and I forgot to set them up on Twitch. I think I set them up on YouTube. We'll get there eventually. Welcome everybody. Tonight we are going to be voting on a big giant mod we're going to make on Sunday. Uh, if you're ready to start voting, <laughs> unlimited power, uh, head over to the link in the description on YouTube or on the little get the little gadget in uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I see Chad in the chat. Yeah, you're just trying to wrap up. No worries, no worries. I like to talk. You're you're in luck. Um, so there's a uh, I put a little gizmo. It says end Alzheimer's in there in uh, the in my chat or uh, what do you call it? The Twitch little sub area down there. There's a there's a donate button. You click that. Type in your amount, your email address, hit next, and then you can you can vote on the polls. And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep opening up new polls as we go. All right, let's see. Okay, yeah, they're go they're still going strong. I'm just gonna hang out with you guys. You'll be a moderator. Can I trust you, Dogtooth? Can I trust you to be a moderator? Do you like a ban Do you like to throw a band hammer around? 
You 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 uh, come across to me as a shoot first, ask questions later type of person. Would that be accurate? <laughs> the Rons are teleporting in. You're right, Erica. If anybody has a, uh, if anybody clipped Erica, you might know, or two pepperoni, one of you guys who are regulars on the stream. Any of you know if we've got a a clip of the. Uh, of the Ron uh, thing, we can uh, from the YouTube people. We should. Uh, I should really <laughs> post. <laughs> well, who is that? Where to go? Where to go? I got to tab around a lot. Yoda seventy seven, great Gazoo too. Thank you for the follows, guys. We're gonna get this working. We're gonna get this working. The super sludge band hammer. <laughs> that sounds like perfect perfect for <laughs> moderating doctor perfect hopefully we'll be okay i think i got a couple of mods here right now and that uh, hopefully we uh uh everyone's cool and chill this boom ba thank you for the follow welcome Antolino, hello thank you welcome <laughs> from ruin we rise Oh, we've got our first Tiltify donation, Pierogi Dog, twenty dollars. Let's see, where is I want to keep? I got to get the uh, the campaigns up. This is I'm oh, very yeah! new to this. We got we got a uh, we got a twenty dollar vote toward our main character being of the witty, sarcastic type. So you're, the options right now: main character archetype, stoic and serious, charismatic and charming, or witty and sarcastic. So we're voting first to establish what kind of main character we're gonna have because we're basically gonna end up having a character you can recruit as a uh as a companion and they're going to take you through a little quest and then at the end of which they will join you forever on your adventures thanks to anoctium uh who's going to put that together who's going to put together the the companion side of things and the uh the sim settlements two team is going to uh, put together the actual uh, quest content well some of us um others i tried not to bother because we are deep in the development of chapter three of sim settlements too because we want to uh, we want to get that thing out before starfield hits the market so that we're not competing for attention with uh, our Lord and Savior, Todd, Todd Howard. We don't need that. Ways to Space, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Little Raven Entertainment it's with the Super Chat, $10. We look forward to seeing what is created and wish you the very best of luck. The company. <laughs> thank you for the donation. Uh, I will to any Super Chat donations. I will redirect to and alzheimer's myself uh, after the stream so thank you appreciate it beamington hello first time chat i see oh from a raider we got raided by another group who are we getting raided by this time i must have missed it oh is that chapter 76 that means that uh west should be available shortly here we go let's see be over in a few minutes just wrapping up i hear from from uh chad 76 so we should be getting started shortly Thank you, Ellie, for the post and the link. Appreciate it. Oops, and I screwed up my chat scroll. I am going to fall horrendously behind on chat and calling out the follows once Wes gets here because we're going to be we're going to be uh, talking up the talking about the charity, talking about the project, etc. So uh, uh, get those follows out of your system now <laughs> in the sub because oh, yeah. uh, hey, there it is. A little delayed. I see it quicker. I see it much quicker in the chat than uh, the the alert system picks it up. Skullface, Book in Hand, Insane Pixels, Ethan W04, Beamington, Hawsenstein, Chad Follow76 pod, Podcast, Lily <laughs> Bela4682. Thank you all for the follows. Appreciate you guys. We got another Tiltify donation coming in. Elo Marino with $10. Thank you so much. Let's uh, keep an eye on let's keep an eye on the uh, on the campaign here. Let me uh, refresh and we'll see where our polls are at, so I can keep you guys up to date. Oh, didn't choose a poll option, so we're leaving it at witty sarcastic in the lead with the, with oh, the twenty dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, thank you, the Ron, for that wonderful sound effect. If you guys don't know what my sound effects are, they are from some settlements too or prior streams. Lots of inside jokes. I think that's what you're supposed to do as a Twitch streamer. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Scullyface, BSW Games, thank you for the follow. Welcome. All right, I am. Uh, I, I literally am going to go set up a third monitor for next stream because my screen is a disaster right now. Uh, thank, 
Thank you for the praise, Beamington. Appreciate it. But yeah, we've got, uh, we've got, can you, dog tooth, can we vote to have someone else do a knockdown job? Oh, harsh, harsh. <laughs> We've got links in both the Twitch and my Twitch uh, little, what do you call that section? It's like kind of like the description area. I'm, I'm a terrible Twitch streamer. A uh, little thing there, you can click on donate there and hit next through and then you can vote on the polls. Uh, I also have a link in the description on the YouTube video and uh, Ellie posted it just a few moments ago. I'm sure people will post it periodically if you guys want to vote on the polls. We're going to get more polls up as we go. Uh, you guys will have an opportunity to uh, to keep voting on them. I'm not going to close. Oh, oh, I saw my. I have my desktop as a backup. It's just a screenshot of my game because I know Fallout 4 and it's going to crash. That is, it's part of the game. Uh, oh yeah! <laughs> yes, thank you, Gopher. Turn off the alerts or you're just going to drive you mad. Yeah, I, I want to know. I need to figure out how. Maybe somebody knows this who uses Streamlabs more than me. Is it possible to mute them for me but not for you guys? Like I'd love like for that. Like I'm fine. I actually enjoy the most of the time, but while I'm trying to have a conversation, it's gonna be a little awkward. It'd be nice to to mute them for me and not for the audience. I don't know if that's a way I can do that. Let me check. Let's see. Alert box. Let's check the settings. So you guys, this is riveting, oh, yeah! riveting content while I uh <laughs> while I set this up. Uh let's see here. Nope, I can't find a way. Yeah, I might have to just turn it off altogether unless somebody tells me how else to do it. But Oh yeah. All right, I think I'm getting blasted by donations that I can't see right now. For some reason, they're showing up on the little thing. Oh, here we go. We got told today don donations coming in. Real Eleonora. Old Worm. You're going to rock this. Thank you, Old Worm. Thank you for the donation. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Flying in. Appreciate it, guys. I got to keep an eye out on my uh, my Discord, I think. Uh, 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 uh chad 76 can comment is uh should i watch for west to uh join me on for call me on discord because if so it'll make a nice loud sound in my ear and i'm good i can just keep uh i can just keep watching chat for a little bit here let's go check the polls now and see where we're at with our first one uh let's see we have got oh man it is uh witty sarcastic dominating at 75 so Maybe it, maybe it turned it off slight, uh, shortly while I was messing with something. Uh, let me get my Tiltify overlay back up. Looks like that got turned off probably when I was test streaming. There we go. Is my Tiltify overlay showing up for you guys all right now? Can you guys see the see our totals? I, know, I don't think it shows the, um, what do you call it? I don't believe it shows the polls, but it should show at least like our, our totals up there. So we're kicking it off good. We're 20 minutes in. We're almost $200 in. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Overlay's working, awesome. I'm gonna get this streaming eventually. Here we go. Uh, you missed a call, I missed a call. Let me call you back. Sorry, I, I must have had uh, Discord on mute. Ring, ring. There we go. Hello, gentlemen, how are yeah. you? Good. Hey, how are you? I am doing fantastic. I have, uh, I didn't I didn't put an avatar in for you on uh, <laughs> Chad76 on there. I did not, did not know you were gonna be joining us. Um, We'll have to pretend you're one of the mannequins. You can choose left or right to be your representative. <laughs> That's okay. I can only stay for a little bit. Uh, King, do you want Wes to have webcam on? Uh, I or am, you just need his voice? Just just your voice, which I think is fitting, right? Oh, perfect. I see you got Mo Cronin sitting right there. So, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, he's standing. <laughs> Fantastic. How did your guys' last stream just go? And you just finished up another one. Awesome. Yeah, we uh, some really amazing, some really amazing signed by people who usually don't sign them. Uh, so all of uh, that's streamly.com forward slash voice of Palooza. Oh, yeah! Any of the character shots you see there, if you request them, uh, the voice actor or actress will sign them, uh, send them off to you, and 100% of the proceeds are going towards our goal here for the Alzheimer's Association. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. And that is that. how long is that going to go on? How, how long will that be open up? The 31st, White Rest? Uh, yeah, that's going to be going through the 31st of yeah. May. And when that's all said and done, we're uh, going to be sending out the, the all the actors will be receiving everything. And we are going to uh, send sign everything and send it out to all the... All the, all the people who All the, the people yeah. who, uh, who purchased it, which is great. I mean, a lot of people want to... 
I think you're, uh, are you, is anybody else here in the West? I think you're cutting out. I can't, uh, I can't hear anything from you right now. Wes, are you still there? Do Oh, no, did we lose Wes? <laughs> I can hear a little bit of sound trying to come through. If, if we need to sh switch over to Zoom, we could do that. I think it may have just been because he closed Zoom. I think the computer got angry. <laughs> All right, we'll give him a, we'll give him a moment. Uh, Some, sometimes uh, Discord might need you to hang up and, uh, and join the call again. Yeah, Wes, if you um, if you click on the disconnect uh, at the top here, the little red telephone, uh, hit that, and then you can rejoin. Sometimes your uh, the computer audio gets weird if you're using other sources like Zoom. This is I feel like this is a, this is a daily ritual ever since COVID of like somebody in the meeting gets gets uh, gets their mic uh, messed up by. My Zoom and company. Wes, can you hear us? <laughs> uh, hang on, let me call. Let me no call problem. On, let me call him on the phone. Like, this is the dark age. <laughs> well, technical difficulties aside, as soon as uh, as soon as we get Wes back on, we'll uh, we'll go. We'll get more into the polls because I got a lot. I got a lot of them lined up for you guys, but I want to uh, I want to let uh, Wes talk about uh, the charity a little bit and see how things are going. Um, in the meantime, we are currently sitting at, on our voting, we are at 75 for Witty Sarcastic, 40 for Stoic Serious. For, for those of you who don't know what we're doing right now, we are going to make a mod this Sunday. So myself, Eleonora, Anaktium, Nero, a bunch of the people from the Sim Settlements team, Atalino, a bunch of mod authors you've played stuff from. We're going to get together all day Sunday and we're going to make a mod together. And we're going to release it that day. It's going to be a 12-hour modathon. And right now, you guys can vote with, by donating to the charity. You guys can vote for different elements of the mod. The mod's going to have a story, a weapon, an armor, and a uh, player home. And we've got different elements you guys can vote on. And uh, you guys are kind of going to just steer our direction. And then we will we'll break after this stream and, and throughout tomorrow to plan out what we're going to do. And then we'll do all the actual construction Sunday live on stream for 12 hours long. You guys are going to see a bunch of artists and voice actors and uh, uh, quest designers all working together to, to create to create the mod. It should be pretty oh, damn yeah! exciting. Jason Lokrantz, thank you for the $60 donation. Uh, just wanted to do my part. Can't wait for the end results. I, me as well. So just a reminder, everybody, if you are doing Super Chats, they don't go toward the polls, but I will redonate that stuff to uh, uh, to the Voice of Palooza char uh, charity for you guys. So that Super Chat's totally fine. Testing, one, two. We've got Wes. Hello, sir. Welcome back. Oh, we lost him again. The testing one two came through. This this is this is what we get for not doing a uh, a test run on the Discord. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? I think that's a no. <laughs> can hear you typing. All right. I'm gonna type too. We need <laughs> Mo needs rage. <laughs> Stream audio is cutting out every few seconds. Is it? Can, is my How audio about, cutting out, guys, now, or is it just Wes? I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Wes. We can hear you. <laughs> or maybe it's his import. Uh, so now we can. Oh, hang on, I'm texting. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We can hear you now, but you can't hear us. All right, I'm gonna. This is for the audience. Can you guys hear me clearly when I'm talking, or is the stream itself cutting out? For an additional fifty dollar donation, we'll continue doing this for the next twenty minutes. This is some <laughs> some top quality improv here. Right now. Uh, we'll do tech support with Wes Johnson. That's yeah. a that's a new thing. It says losing both of you at certain intervals. Well, that's no good. Are we having Are we having uh, just internet issues? Is the are we are we breaking the internet with our tiny little stream here? Is that what you guys are suggesting? Uh, nope, Wes. It's 
something weird is happening with the audio here. Uh, you know what? Uh, King, I can start my Zoom room if you want to just grab audio feed from that. Okay. Uh, if, if let this me. Isn't working here. All right, let me hold on. I'm gonna switch, guys. I'm gonna switch the stream over to like my standby screen for just a moment, while I, uh, well, if I can figure out how to do that. Let's see, studio mode here it is, uh, and then I will get Zoom up. I'll just get my personal up since we're not streaming it, and I'll just keep it on my second monitor, and then I can just join you guys in a Zoom call. How's that sound? Perfect. Uh, okay. All right, so Wes, we're gonna hop over to Zoom here because Discord is being Discord. <laughs> all right so let's end this call and i will uh uh you can i believe the email address i sent you my private one that should be my zoom account as well uh if oh, not, i'm just gonna drop i'm gonna drop the uh, zoom link right here oh in our perfect okay discord chat here okay we'll, we'll, audience will get past this don't worry don't hang tight hang tight all right let's get into zoom here So, you know, my experience from work is that uh, Zoom is going to be just as problematic <laughs> as Discord with with the uh, service issues and everything. So we'll see how this goes. Let me try join. Uh, let's see. Well, I hope my thing worked. Otherwise, you guys, otherwise I just uh, spoiled my, my RL information because Zoom decided to put it right up on front. Uh, let's see here. Join. Did I click the right link? Oh man, all my personal info out there if that's what just happened. Come on, Zoom. We can do it. We can do it. Okay, I see myself. I see I see you. Uh yep, I'm just sending the link to Wes here. Okay. <laughs> Zoom just keeps throwing everything on my on my main monitor over and over again. All right, so if somebody wants to put me at ease, tell me that you only see, please stand by on my screen. Oh, thank God, thank you, Ellie. You know the pain, of the, the fear. I actually set up, I took advantage of Windows, I think it's a, 10, it's a Windows 10 feature where you can have a second desktop to make sure that all my personal stuff sitting on my desktop wouldn't pop up, but I did not anticipate the Zoom pop-ups. There we go, there's Wes. We've got you, Wes. How's, how's Zoom going for you? Wes is connecting to audio. Hello there. There we go. All right, fantastic. Can, can you hear us? We can hear you. I can hear you, yeah. Ah, oh, there we great. go. All right, now we can we can bring back up the, uh, the, the room. The technical difficulties are over. Mo Cronin is back. Welcome, sir. Thank you for taking the time tonight to chat with us because you've got a lot of super fans in the room. Uh, I was saying to uh, uh, to Ken earlier that uh, among the Bethesda fans, you are a massive celebrity because we all love your characters. Well, I appreciate that. It's wonderful to be here, and I, I know it's it's not necessarily the characters I like. They like some nice swatter, you know, <laughs> some hefty hickory, a little bobbed wire. Now, what I need to know is, do you like it better with the uh, bobbed wire? Or do you like it better with a couple of nails to it? <laughs> Fantastic. So, so Wes, I have a, a, a funny thing that happened before the stream. I told my, my son, he's five years old. I told him that I was going to be interviewing somebody who does characters for video games. And he said, Oh, okay. And I said, he, he didn't seem that excited. And I said, uh, but he also is the announcer for hockey. And he's like, what? He gets to do that for a job? <laughs> so you know. I know, right? I mean, that's the <laughs> thing. You know, they make you wear a suit sometimes, which I've slowly started to get rid of because they moved me upstairs and away from the penalty box, which is sad. I was in the penalty box for 19 years, but I've been doing it for 23 years now. So the remainder have been upstairs. Um, but yeah, it's it's like the, the kid in you used to listen to the PA announcer and wonder where that voice was coming from. <laughs> now I know. Yeah. Yeah. For the, so wow. So you've been there since the beginning. Cause right. They were, they were late to the franchise. They were uh seventies, right. It's when they joined the NHL. 74, 1974. And I've been doing this since uh, 2000. I was the uh, PA announcer for the bullets and then the wizards before that. And 
I've done a lot of different sports. I've done, uh, I did a little Orioles baseball. I did uh, some DC United soccer, which I didn't like. Did, not that like I didn't soccer. like the soccer. No, it was fine. But they have two PA announcers. They have one who's English and one who's Spanish. And they only let the Spanish guy say, go! <laughs> and let's be honest, it's the same word in both languages. <laughs> they like his enthusiasm more? <laughs> they just feel it's a Spanish thing. And I felt it was time to move on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you are you happy where you're at? Do you do you like being uh, part of the Capitals? Oh, I do, I do. Yeah, I mean, I they, and during the summer, I get a chance to, um, you know, go out and do things like the uh, City Open tennis tournament. Okay. So I get to announce tennis, and mostly during the summer, I spend time traveling around to, um, uh, you know, conventions and things of that sort. Yeah. Now, is it, uh, I, I've seen photos of you in uh, full, uh, and I'm going to butcher the name because I uh, haven't played Skyrim in a minute. Uh, Shiogara. Shiogara. Thank da you, Shiogara. Daedric Prince of Madness. <laughs> Don't mispronounce my name. You may have to skip <laughs> rope with your entrails. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I have seen you in full regalia going out, out and about. Do you do that at most cons you go to now? Well, yeah, because they do these uh, epic photo shoots and right. they want people want to get a photo done. So I just go ahead. Uh, you know, John Berriman dresses up a lot more differently than I would, but he dresses up for these things. And sometimes people dress up. Other times people are like, hey, I'm just going to sit here in my clothes and you can take a picture with me. Uh, for me, I feel bad that anybody's spending any money whatsoever. So I kind of you know, <laughs> go out of my way a little to make it something different. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, so how, how did you get into, to, and I, if this is, I, and first of all, we didn't plan this at all guys. So I'm just kind of shooting from the hip here and turning this into a Wes Johnson interview. Uh, the real purpose here is, is Alzheimer's. We're going to get to that in just a second. I just, my fanboys got to ask a couple questions. I hope you don't mind Wes. No, anything. Well, what, Fantastic. What I, what I was just going to ask like? how you, how you got into this, like for, cause in my head now, um, so I, I, I grew up in, in hockey town, Detroit during the night, during the Iserman years. So like, I'm. I got a deep, lot of deep hockey. So to me, like in my head now, head cannon is as the uh, uh, the Capitals announcer. You happen to meet some of the guys at Bethesda, and that's how you connect. With <laughs> but I don't know what the true story is. How did you get into to voice well, acting? Actually, what came first? actually, what came first was like stand up comedy, sketch comedy, improv, doing films, things of that sort, and then started getting into radio. Um, so they WHFS back in the day, the old. Uh, alternative station in dc which kind of legendary i started doing some voices because i was doing my sketch comedy stuff with a thing called the daily feed okay and then they needed someone to come in and start doing voices on the morning show so i came in in the morning show and started writing comedy and doing my comedy and bits there well while i was doing my comedy and my bits there i ended up uh meeting wolfman jack and oh, then nice. doing a lot of, uh, for two years, I worked writing sketch comedy and doing bits with Wolfman. You know, hey, how you doing, baby? Are you little peachy sweet? So <laughs> Wolf and I hung out for two years. I saw him the last night before he passed away. He gave me a big hug. He's like, don't you go nowhere, baby. Great things going to be happening. I, I got a bad feeling something's going to mess this up. I'm like, I ain't going anywhere, Wolf. I'm not going anywhere. I'm with you, pal. And then the next morning, he gets off his plane, gets uh, out Goes home, gets out of his car, raggle snaggles his dog, walks up the stairs to his wife, Lou Lamb Smith, opens his arms and says, one more time for a big hug, and then fell into her arms and died of a massive heart attack. Jesus. So, wow. yeah. Rest, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. Very, very sad to lose that, and it, which is interesting because I was a big fan of Wolfman Jacks for years, and then I ended up becoming a friend. And when you lose somebody like that, and you find yourself sitting in front of the TV watching people doing all these, you know, they start running the retrospectives of their lives and things of that on TV. And you find yourself mourning both the celebrity and your friend at the same time, almost as if they're two different people. It was it was, sure. it was kind of weird. But I started doing that sort of thing. And then I started um, doing um, I was doing acting and casting and things of that sort and got cast to a local agency to do a couple of different games. One was Unreal 2. Love me some Unreal. Awesome. And all I did was play like 200 people dying grisly deaths. That was, <laughs> I, was I was basically a, a, a living Wilhelm scream track. That's and awesome. 
you know, four hours of sitting there dying in all these different ways. Okay, Wes, uh, grenade blows up in your stomach. Ah! Okay, Wes, <laughs> uh, you get chopped in half by a blade. Ah! Okay, Wes, something gets caught in a zipper. Ah! You know, so, <laughs> you know that was terrible. basically it. Then I did uh, Morrowind. Okay, nice. And, and I- Morrowind was the beginning of working with Bethesda and working with uh, – and, and also it was beginning for me of getting into the gaming because when the game came out, I mean, I put like six, 700 hours into that sucker. What a wonderful point, game that was, right? The Morrowind was yeah. oh, incredible. Oh, yes. We've been expecting you. Come right in. Tell <laughs> us a bit about yourself. So, yeah, I, I ended up playing the game and, and um, to the point where some nights you think you're going to play for a half an hour. <laughs> and, the next thing you know, birds are chirping outside your yep. day is toast. Yep. I mean, I'm anticipating so, one of those days on uh, when's the, when's Starfield September sixth? Is that when? Is that when we get to do that? The ninth, ninth, September ninth. Okay. Of yeah. course, we've got we've got the ESO uh, Necrom coming out on June the fifth, which is going to be awesome because I get the reprise for Maeus Mora. Nice, nice. That's right around the corner. Now I, I don't mm. know if you're allowed. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it. Are you? Did you get to do any voices in Starfield, or is that a NDA? We'll find out in in a couple of months. I don't know what you're talking about. But, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's fair. I, I can talk about uh, Necrom. Sure. Uh, if you had any questions about that, because that the cat's out of the bag with that. About a month ago, we did a big unveiling in Vegas, and I got to take pictures standing next to a giant Hermaeus Moore statue, which was awesome. Nice. I saw and, you guys did. You guys raised quite a bit with a lot of the other cast on another stream. That was a it was right. Quite, quite a good one. Yeah, we we've uh, we we did the uh, what was that a week or so ago, maybe two weeks ago when we first started. No, it was a week ago, and we had all the voice actors from ESO. And tomorrow we're going to do one with all the devs. So if you had any questions about Necrom or uh, anything that's ESO related, the people who actually know are going to be with us, and that's going to be amazing. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's happening next week. Mm-mm. That's happening tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, at four p.m. Tomorrow. Oh, sorry, I got when you said last week about the other thing. I got so tomorrow, four p.m. If you're an ESO tomorrow fan, at four p.m. It's a it's a talk to the deep devs. dive with the ESO devs, and uh, yeah, you've got questions. They've got answers. Uh, will they give them to you? I don't know, but they've got answers. And I guess yeah, next week would make any sense because this with it, we're we're almost wrapping this up, right? Whistlepalooza ends on the end of the month, so the last mm-hmm. few days here, fantastic. Um, We've got. If we want to beat last year's total, we've still got about $10,000 to raise. But I really do believe that we can do that. We've got so many cool things coming up. Uh, what are you doing Saturday? So, um, Oh, I know what you're going to be doing. Building a mod all day long. Ah, that's it. Sunday, actually. Saturday, we're going to be a couple of uh, our, our squad are going to be doing the writing. So, so that fantastic segue. So tonight, the goal is to get the ideas for the mod. So we've got a squad put together who's gonna make a quest. We're gonna get some voice actors involved. We're gonna get some artists involved. We're gonna make a bunch of stuff, but we're gonna let the audience vote via donations. So we're taking advantage of this really cool Excellent. feature on Tiltify where people can donate to a poll and then we'll take the results of all these polls at the end and uh, we'll make a mod out of it. So we're gonna, we're gonna do pre-production on uh, tomorrow and Saturday. And then actual production, all the, the fun to watch stuff and some not so fun to watch stuff like me coding. Uh, we'll do all that stuff live <laughs> on camera all day on Sunday. And then Sunday night, you're going to you're going to pop in at the end. We're going to finish. Yeah, we're going to finish the, uh, the the voice of Palooza proper the voice of Palooza prime um, where we're going to have so many uh, voice actors doing bits and voices to old movies things of that sort we're going to create our own game out of improv and it's going to suck but that's what's <laughs> funny we take suggestions from the crowd and build a game that's terrible but you're going to build something far better ours is normally done just for funny yeah our well we're hoping ours is going to be good that's the but that's what we're going to find out because because uh so sunday night gopher is going to do a playthrough uh first have you on so you can we can we can tell you about all the pain we went through um, and we all, and then we'll all watch together and hope that it's good. <laughs> that's the, that's the plan. Um, well, so, that sounds fun. I mean, it, it, you know, it's very adventurous of you to, to do this. I am a glutton for punishment. I take on as many, <laughs> as many projects as I can. Uh, and this is, uh, this is something I've been wanting to do. I've actually been in, I've been training for this Wes for months, ever since 
uh, Ken said he he. Uh, I hear the he theme from idea. Rocky in my head as you're training. <laughs> I did a couple of streams. I called. Bum, bum, bada, bum, bada, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I did a couple of speed modding streams where I saw like how much how quickly can I create a mod. Uh, a little story mod and uh so I, I flexed my muscles a little bit kind of figured out where the hiccups were going to be and so we're going to try and take those lessons amplify it and see what we can do um so i, I gotta ask you before we get into to these polls and stuff ha, do you have any experience playing any mods i know you said you put in a lot of hours in morrowind so obviously you've got some gaming chops did you ever you ever find yourself playing any mods or is yeah, that, I, that outside your thing i do play mods i do put no i put mods in i haven't played the full mods but i've played a lot of mods and put them in just to see how it works uh you know i i true let's be honest i like to be a superhero in my games people Fair. are like i want to play the game so tough that i'm dying every five seconds i'm like that's what <laughs> life is for man that's real life i play these games to get away i want to walk in there into a room I want to walk into some pub and have even the liar player drop it and run because he's so afraid of me. <laughs> that is, I think that's what draws a lot of us to these Bethesda games, right? They're all they're almost power fantasies because you get to you eventually you become the most powerful person in the world every time. Yeah, and and what's not to like about that? It's Although awesome. I do remember back in the day when uh, Oblivion, we were playing Oblivion, and my boys would be playing it. They're they've moved out of the house now. They've grown up and gone on. But they would be in the back playing it, and I'd hear uh, a guard going, "Old criminal scum. No one gets what. Ah, eh, ah. It's the sound of my boys are chopping me to bit with broadswords in the back bedroom. I'm being murdered by my own kids, which actually, um, my I approve. If they're going to kill me with a broadsword, I'd rather they do it in a game. Fair, fair. Bring an avatar up. You know, let if if the uh, Menendez brothers' dad had been in a video game, he might still be alive today. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I, we always say that. I got two boys, and we always say we want them to be super close, but not Menendez brother close. Just a little right, little yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's it's funny you did the the Unreal uh, death sounds is a perfect segue into Bethesda. So what, what we found out when we started making Bethesda quest mods, because I, I originally started doing, um, I've been modding a lot of games over my life, but when I got into Bethesda stuff and started doing the story mods, we found out very quickly that for every character, you have to have record uh, our combat sounds. So it's like a death throw. Exactly. And, and they like, have uh, to sound like the character. Yeah, yeah. So we, that's like one of the things, yeah. we have like a generic template we send to every voice actor who works with us. So you were probably just a shoe in for for getting that role in, in Morrowind after all that experience. Well, the funny that. thing, the <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, in uh, Morrowind, I asked uh, Todd Howard was the director of the voice actors on Morrowind, and I asked Todd, and I said, "Well, what the Bretons here? What do they sound like when they're fighting?" Because I played the Bretons and done all this. He says, "Well, they're they're kind of a feat. They're they don't want to fight. They want to get so." Yeah, when they were getting hit with broadswords, I made them into screaming little bitches. But um, <laughs> that's a what happened. However, what happened <clears throat> is people started playing the games, and they're like. Well, my mage is mighty and would never run screaming like a little uh, baby if he was getting hit with a broadsword. <laughs> Thinking, you know, really, dude, everybody would run screaming like a baby if someone came in with a giant broadsword and <laughs> tried to whack him with it. Oh, yeah! But there was, I found out about it because I saw a mod. Oh, that's awesome. A mod that somebody wanted to change the battle sounds of the Bretons because they felt that Wes Johnson was too a feat and couldn't do battle sounds. Oh, that's hilarious. I, I love that. There are people now who are like, you know, you, you, you occasionally read notes on your own uh, work. Yeah. And you shouldn't do that where they're like, <laughs> well, obviously Wes Johnson has no range. I mean, Lucy Lachance and uh, Mr. Burke sound almost exactly alike. And it's like, well, yeah, that was kind of on purpose. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it it's it, it's just the way it is you know yeah. uh, that somebody wanted to do to exchange it but i when i i remembered that when i went in to voice all the imperial guards okay and the imperial guards were not their death cries were not like the bretons and morwen they were very different did did you do you overcorrect did you oh, like yeah. right, we're not we're not going to get we're not going to get called uh <laughs> called out for this no, one no i don't know if i overcorrected i just know that by playing Morwind and getting into that world and getting immersed into that world, I saw that world when I was voicing Oblivion. 
Sure. I lived within that world. It gave me the context and the framework to make these things feel more real. Oh. I felt I felt like as the guards, as my characters, as these, I would envision myself in those worlds, wearing those clothes, being those people, getting 100% immersed within the character, which I did more of in Oblivion and all the games after than I did initially in Morrowind. And I have to think the time I spent playing the games. Right. There are a lot of voice actors who really don't play the games. We found that out. We found it very often. We'll have so one of the things we've we've started doing on our mod team is we will have some of the voice actors on, and we'll do uh, let have them voice their character for charity, and mm -hmm. uh, and it's almost universal that they've never played the the mod. I was like, that's fair. I get you don't always have time. I I find I play a whole lot less games uh, now after I started making them. Um, I don't know if your if your game time has gone down after you started acting in them, or if it had no no correlation. My game time goes down when life interferes, sure. when you have to, uh, you, you find yourself overloaded with work or things like right now we're doing so much for voice of Palooza. I have no time to do any games. Sure. Um, that being said, I love nothing more than to have an entire afternoon. I know better than to think I'm going to jump on for half an hour. That just doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean, when you sit, you have yeah. to sit down until there's no feeling left in your buttocks. You're suffering slight renal failure. You realize you haven't eaten in half a day. These are the kind of things that you get yourself into when you sit down to play because you get lost in this other world. And yeah. uh, tell me that you haven't been playing a game and been feeling hungry and go out and get yourself a little Myers Meyer lurk steak or something like that, thinking that might make you feel a little better. It doesn't. <laughs> you have to eat real food. <laughs> the uh the and I think the type of games we're playing here, especially with those games, uh is they kinda like push even more on that on that urge to go all night where it's just like just one one more building to check in or one more one more dungeon to clear out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they always do that. And that's why people get mad at, uh, what's his name, in uh, Fallout 4. There's another settlement. Oh, yeah, yeah, like Preston. You. Preston. <laughs> Preston Garvey. Preston he's, Garvey. Yeah, he's giving them stuff to do that's not clearing dungeons. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you know, I, I put Preston Garvey in a mascot head and a slinky evening gown. <laughs> and he's still walking around coming up to me. I've got another mission for you. And I'm like, what's that sexy? So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember uh, talking to his voice actor and having to explain to him that I did that. It's, it seemed wrong. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's especially got amusing for, for the, if he's not one of the people who actually plays the games and be like, what are you talking about? I think about, he Wes? does. <laughs> I, I played like I, when we went out to ESO and I sat down, I mean, first of all, I know that Courtney Taylor does play the game. She's very cool. She plays the games. I'm not sure how much of this. I know she does. Yeah. Uh, but Paul Guyette, Paul Guyette, uh, who I met out at the ESO thing in Las Vegas, he and I became like fast friends. The kind of fast friends you know when you look at each other and you go, ah, you nerd like me! You know, so then <laughs> we were just great friends. We can talk about games, talk about the stuff that we do. He's he's a lot of fun. He's going to... He's joining us, I think, either for improv, uh, for Voice of Palooza. He'll be doing stuff this weekend with us. If you get a chance, check him out. We did a thing, an improv bit on the stage for ESO where, uh, what is the name of his character? His character showed up at a, a, a restaurant and working behind the uh, megaphone at the restaurant, I was Hermaeus Mora at Apocrypha Burger. <laughs> and uh, we did this whole thing. It was great. And John uh, Curry was there and he played Damien and he came out, you know, with like, uh, a couple of big things of French bread. You know, he really should have taken his shirt off for it, but I understand. <laughs> now, but this, we had a, is this we at had a, a is this at an improv club? You did this, or did you do this for for? No, event? this was on this was on stage at the ESO live event that we did for uh, the unveiling of Necrom uh, oh, Moon oh, over okay. uh, Shadow awesome. over Morrowind. I I am and, I uh, unfortunately am not an ESO player, so I missed out on that. I. Uh, I, this are, will make you an ESO player. Have you seen any of the trailers for this? The, all the ESO trailers look amazing. Their oh, cinematic team is incredible. Those guys know what it's, they're doing. 
Yeah, and and, uh, and some of the sh- that they've actually working with uh, DB, the director, uh, w- worked me into some different areas with uh, Hermaeus Moore this time. Uh, so they wanted him a little change, but wanted him similar. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we went through some things and did some little changes, but I think that he's very atmospheric and it's really cool. And it's uh, it's very fine. Oh, Marcus Jones bros eating cheese in my honor. Thank you very much. I don't know <laughs> if you brought cheese for everyone there. Cheese for everyone. <laughs> All right. That's that. That's reminding me. We got to get back to raising some money tonight. So. Uh, let's do that let's, let's do, do that. that so first of all we got it we had a couple donations while we were chatting uh v lynn love says excited oh, yeah! excited to the creative flow of such a talented team donated ten dollars a twenty dollar right. donation from anonymous guardian mf with a ten dollar donation so uh let's go over the first let's go over the polls and i think i'm going to close the first one and open a new one so our first poll was uh we want to make a character driven story i think those are the best stories so mm-hmm. we started with our main character archetype. We had the the voting was between stoic and serious, charismatic and charming, or witty and sarcastic. Witty and sarcastic mm. defeated everybody else with one hundred and forty dollars in donations. So we're gonna sounds go, like about right. Sounds, sounds about, about right. Yeah, I, I anticipated as much. Hopefully, our writers have some comedy chops. If not, they're gonna learn real quick because they get they get about forty eight <laughs> hours to write this whole thing. Um, so I'm Could gonna they be more sarcastic. <laughs> It'll go in well with the Fallout 4 dialogue system, which has uh, the, the dedicated sarcastic button. So next, we're going to vote on our character's background and the character's faction. So I've opened up two new polls. I'm closing off another one. So if you're on the Tiltify donation page, if you refresh there. So we've got a couple of options. You've got two polls to choose from now. The first one is the, the character background. You can choose between a soldier slash veteran, a scholar slash scientist, survivor slash wastelander, and a merchant slash entrepreneur. So that's our, our character background. And then uh, mm. this, the second one is the faction. That's another one poll. We've got settler, which just kind of means like they're not associated with any of the, the main four groups, kind of just somebody living life out there in the Commonwealth. Then you've got the Brotherhood of Steel, Institute, Minutemen, and Railroad. So you guys are going to vote on those with your donations. Just click on the the little Twitch uh, thing or click on a link. I think the mods are spamming it in chat. It's also in the description on my YouTube video. You can go donate there on the Tiltify page, and then it will, on the next screen, it will let you see the polls, and you can vote. Basically, you put your dollars on one of those options. So let's look at who we have here. We have the soldier veteran. We have a scholar scientist, a survivor wastelander, and a merchant entrepreneur. But... Truthfully, Survivor Wastelander could be any one of them. Are you basically saying that this character is unemployed? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. They're 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 scraping by. Maybe they're uh, they're not going like so. Mo Cronin, merchant entrepreneur, yeah. right? He's uh, right. We got we got, got a nice swat. He's got a nice swat. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, Survivor Wastelander could be just any random person. They're not necessarily could be it. Could be super mutants. Now, if. Uh, See, here's here's one thing that I will say. Kobus, who's doing our voice direction, uh, urged me to be careful about what I put on these polls because uh, the ability to do a super mutant is a rare talent, as uh, mm. as I think you can imagine. It's a it's a tough. Vo- well, I don't, what do you think? Is it is it a tough voice? Is it a tough voice do, to do over the long term? Does it hurt if you got to do it a whole lot in a in a? It short depends. Of time? A throat voice can be hurty, but oh uh, yeah. Basically, there's a lot of effort goes into it. I was sweating like a big dog by the end of my four hours of uh, my Fox and uh, Uncle Leo and my Fallout Three uh, sessions. Yeah, I, so, I can imagine. Have you have you had to voice a ghoul in Elder Scrolls game and ran into a Kashyyyk? I was like, uh oh, did, did I get myself into some sort of furry thing? And then, uh, the, yeah, hearing them talk, they're they're awesome. So we got it sounds similar to the lizard folk a bit. A little bit, yeah. Oh, the, the what are the Argonian? Um, mm-hmm. Almost, almost got myself called out as not an Elder Scrolls fan. There, I almost forgot Argonian. Um, Argonians. We've got our first donation for the for these two polls. Captain Laserbeam with ten dollars yeah. toward Merchant Entrepreneur. So Merchant Entrepreneur oh, is okay. where, where we're trending right now. If you would like to change our main character's background, just throw a throw a donation up there. Uh, we're gonna do this, Wes. How, Wes, let, let's uh, let's be honest with ourselves about time. I don't wanna I don't wanna waste more of your time than is necessary. I know again, this is you know we don't consider this a, a waste to be talking with you or anything, but I know you got family, you got stuff to do. So how long should we give everybody to vote on these polls this evening? You got. I would think. I would think. Uh, how many polls do you have? We've got. Uh, let me th- let me see here. We have got. 
I can per element. So we need to do at least three more after this, but I've got like 10 more after this if we if we go good. So well, I mean, if you got if you had 10 minutes to try to get people to donate, that would be good. But if you have less to try to roll through, I get that. Sure, sure. I have I have plenty of time. I'm asking you how much time you have because get through through a handful okay. more. Does that work? All right. That sounds good. For uh, sure. Survivor Wastelander could be a number of different things. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Mm. Like, uh, NCR Ranger or, or for, for, mm -hmm. the, for the New Vegas fans. Absolutely. Hey. I mean, soldier, soldier veteran. I mean, it could be Institute, but I mean, there's a chance you're a synth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that I mean, that's always a, a ace in the hole. We could pull out and make the character a synth. All right. So we got another donation for Merchant oh, Entrepreneur. Yeah! $20 from Mush2023. And then. Two, thank you, Mush. Yeah, thank you, Mush. Appreciate it. Two large pepperoni has a five dollar donation on a factions. We've got our first faction donation for five bucks on railroad. Oh so, yeah! So mm. we think how that all plays out in uh, in Fallout Four. I think there's um, uh, when when you go in. So for those of us who are modders, we we know if we dig into the creation kit, the tool for for modding, we see all the characters that are secretly synths, but it's never actually revealed because you can't kill them in the base game. And like once you start to think about it, it's like really like the railroads just protecting all sorts of people that you love in the game. So it was uh, it's an interesting wow. way they did that. I, I like the, uh, I, I really love the story for, for Fallout 4. I think it's really cool the way they set up so all the factions. If, if anybody wants something other than Railroad, they need to top in a bid now. I mean, five isn't so bad. You can pretty much top that easily. We're getting to the point now where Merchant Entrepreneur is taking a lead at $30. But if anybody out there feels strongly about Survivor, Wastelander, Scholar, Scientist, or Soldier Veteran, or just likes to muck up the works a little bit now would be the time <laughs> to get that bid in that's right that's right we're going to open up a new set of polls in about three minutes here guys so if you want to change so this is uh, i'm so, so would you so say a survivor wastelander would be who would be the scrappiest i don't know if the merchant entrepreneur would be the scrappiest companion no i don't think uh, so. i would think a soldier veteran might not be much fun Survivor Wastelander, I think, gives you a lot of flexibility. It does. I'm sure that's, I think Survivor Wastelander is probably what the writers are hoping for. Same with, they're probably hoping for Settler over one of the factions to give them a lot of wiggle room. Because I think they're going to be, mm -hmm. they're going to be pushing their, uh, pushing their capabilities with, oh, yeah! with comedy. Because that's a. Make with sinks. Uh, so veteran, <laughs> soldier veteran just got 10. Thanks. So. Thank you, Sonic Phil, for the donation. Appreciate it. Soldier veteran. In the, it's in the running now. It's a possibility. But Railroad's are, running away with only five dollars. Somebody could could maybe do an upset here. Could easily take that out. Easily take us in a different mm -hmm. direction there for sure. For sure. So what? Do you, so now you guys uh, are doing. You said you guys are going to put together um, a stream where you improv and you create a game. Now you're talking about creating a game. Like imagine this is a game, right? Like you, you, or do well, you guys we, have a squad get, of devs out there? Are you guys doing a game jam uh, here? What's the? No, we just we just do a thing where it's like uh, we voice actors, and basically we say, "Give us a title, give us a hero, give us a villain, give us a couple of household items, give us uh, the ultimate weapon, give us the names of some sidekicks." Now, who plays this? Who plays that? And then we we pull the story together, and it's usually a hilarious train wreck. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds like a lot of fun. What day is that? You got, or did you guys already do that? That will be Sunday. That so will be Sunday. Sunday at, I believe, 5 p.m. And that's Eastern time for those of you. Uh, Eastern United States, 5 p.m. on Sunday. So that should be fun. Yeah, and that's like going to be a big creative when day that's then. done. So you guys will be creating we'll, that. We'll be creating our thing. It's going to be, uh, be a lot of stuff to watch that day. I'm going to go from one fake game made up game to one that's probably a whole lot better when uh when you get your things <laughs> we're so. going to be doing a couple of bots uh oh soldier veteran just moved into a tie with merchant entrepreneur oh, oh fantastic we're gonna have to we're gonna have to extend it here we got we got about one more minute for oh, a swap yeah! the polls if we uh if we don't if we if we're stuck on a tie then i guess the uh we'll let you choose wes we'll let you choose a tie if we end okay up all right well, so, i'll break somebody's heart you will um, you don't have to do it uh eric ember studios thank you for the donation says some love for the veterans very nice very nice well so scholar scientist is getting none nobody likes the scientist uh survivor wastelander i mean i thought it had a lot of of possibilities but maybe it was just a little too bland oh my goodness settler just jumped up oh! Yeah. Into twenty dollar lead over oh, railroad. Yeah, there we go. Mush twenty twenty three. Thank you for the donation. Settler 
our current. Uh, Thank you much. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna make. I think that'll make the writers happy because they can do anything with that. It doesn't have to be. They don't have to write themselves into one of these factions because some of the factions could be a little, a little tricky to write, a little limiting, especially something like the Brotherhood. Uh, Somebody could throw just a dollar or so, five dollars, whatever, some small amount at whether they want merchant entrepreneur or soldier veteran. That's true. Take this puppy over the top. In fact, I would oh, say yeah! at this point. Next top up wins, wouldn't you? I would say that. Yeah. Next top up on Solder or Merchant, we close these polls and we lock it in. Canuck82 with a $10 donation. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't there see it went. Now. Merchant Entrepreneur. Merchant Entrepreneur takes it. All right. Let's lock these polls down. We'll move on to the next ones. So the next polls we're going to do are going to be about our story. So now we've got our characters situated. So now we're going to do uh, uh, two things here. We're going to have our, oh, uh, yeah! our story type and our story setting. And we'll uh, read off those in just a second. I just mm. heard another one come in here. What was that? That was anonymous with a $10 donation. I don't know if you snuck it into one of the polls. Um, if there was a if there was a mistake on one of the polls, I will correct it later. Don't worry, we have the writers and everything. We'll find out the final actual tallies. So our story type, we've got three options. An action, so lots of shooting bad guys, stuff like that. Comedy, obviously fitting with the witty sarcastic or a mystery. So I imagine uh mm. mystery would end up something like a lot like a lot of dialogue -y type of stuff a lot more you know talking mystery would be sort of like what we're doing saturday uh at 2 p.m when we play the uh, nick valentine oh, uh so radio that. program that oh that, i gotta so tell good. you that is we we came up we sat down we had a brainstorming session with uh, ken and emil pagliarello and myself yeah and then ken went to town ken outdid himself <laughs> on this one it looks uh, awesome. And you guys pulled out everybody. It's got just like the whole Fallout forecast and then some. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, the whole thing is is uh, it was so much fun to work with all these great people. We, we have uh, Zach Ward in there, too. Uh, do you remember Zach? I do. I just saw him in the, the Christmas Story sequel. I, was, I had no I thought, idea I that he was, was the, the kid best in that. part. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought he was the best part of that sequel. I really did. That was a that was a really good sequel. I'm so there was because they may accepted them like they were just like pretended they didn't exist, and then we get real Ralphie instead. Yeah, like, fantastic. Yeah, hey, always go with real Ralphie. <laughs> none of this fake, none of this fake Ralphie or, or who was it? Um, the guy from City Slickers uh, and Home Alone. He was he was like he took he over as the, the dad. dad. He was the old man. Yeah. But there was one where Charles Grodin did it. Oh, I didn't see that one. I just saw. I remember seeing the uh, uh, the Daniel Stern one. That's, that's what it was Daniel Stern. And I was just like, this is offensive. This is so bad. Nobody um, is Darren McGavin. Excuse me. Nobody is Darren McGavin. Rest in peace, Darren. I got to meet. I go out to his uh, cemetery grave there. It's. Uh, out at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, I met, I saw his grave there, and Mel Blank. Oh wow, Mel Blank, voice of all his of our favorite cartoon characters back in the his day. His headstone says, "That's all, folks." Oh wow, that's perfection. Um, all right, we've got we didn't oh, oh we yeah! didn't go over our second poll here story setting so uh, city so that could be either Diamond City or Good Neighbor. We'll let the writers decide. Oh yeah, in a vault, in the glowing sea in a settlement or in some ruins. So the ruins would be like, you know, random office building or, or downtown Boston or something. I Glowing imagine C is uh, moving away with it. Move, Glowing C is taking it right now. We've got uh, uh, Captain Laserbeam with a $10 donation and two large pepperoni with a $5 donation saying, bring on the chaos. Hmm. Perfection. Uh, so we've got uh, Glowing C up there in the lead right now. We're going to, we're doing these polls just for about five minutes each. So we gotta, we'll go this one for another two or three minutes. Uh, if anybody wants to take story type, you got it really Remember, easily. sarcasm works with an action. Sarcasm I... does work with a mystery. Comedy, eh, maybe a little broad, a little waka waka, but you can throw <laughs> comedy into either the action or the mystery. I think I feel so. The the I, I came up with these and I just asked our our team if they had any problem with any of them. So nobody did. Uh, so I kind of got to explain what my my thoughts was with the story type. So I figure it's something like story type going to be heavily the action heavily action driven your quest objectives are going to be go out and kill people mystery probably more dialogue -y. you're going to you're going to be talking to a lot of people trying to figure something out comedy i feel like can kind of blend the two so you can kind of have a little bit a little bit of talk going around and have those uh, hopefully funny moments and then some some uh 
going out and shooting bad guys too. So that's kind of how I'm envisioning it. I'll let the writers do what they want with it. As long as they are proud to say, yes, this is an action story or yes, this is a comedy story or yes, this is a mystery story, we'll count it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, like I said, this whole thing with these polls is just going to be the seeds and then hopefully the writers uh, can uh, come up with something really funny. Because I, I They'll I, water it, they'll spread a little manure and hope it grows. <laughs> hope it grows. Wes, do you do, so you do voice acting. Oh, uh, yeah! Do you have any other uh, creative hobbies, creative outlets uh, that you do? I'm a writer, I'm a cartoonist. Uh, I had a, a daily comic strip in the Washington Times for two years. Fantastic. But I couldn't continue because they didn't pay a lot mm -hmm. and I had a family. Mystery yeah. and Action each have five dollars right now. Fantastic. Who do we got those donations from? Two or let's see, Sonic Phil with uh with a five dollar donation. The other one's not coming up on my screen. I don't know who did it, so thank you, whoever that was who donated to the other poll. We've oh, got yeah! action and mystery tied up right now. Uh but the reason I that I asked real real Eleonora was the other one. So we've got uh, action and mystery tied up. The oh. reason I ask about creative fields is like I think you will understand this problem that I wanted to solve with the polls, and that is the blank canvas problem. When you sit right. down to create something and you have unlimited potential, it's really intimidating to get started. You can almost see the tumbleweeds rolling across the page. Right, or across your brain if you're a, if you're a writer. Yeah. Uh, oh, there are tumbleweeds in my brain. That's all I have. <laughs> that's all you got left. Uh, my brain looks like a shredded wheat that's come undone. <laughs> So I, I thought that these this would be helpful and a, and a, hopefully a great way to raise a few bucks for the charity. I know we're, we're closing in. I think you guys are, um, the current goal on the overall charity is to hit 25K, which would be fantastic, right? Nice uh, chunk. And I think we're right on the cusp of that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and, and guys, you can really push this over on Action or Mystery uh, with a donation right now as we end up towards the end. And if somebody really feels strongly about City Vault, Settlement of Ruins, and somebody did. Uh, the city just took $20 and pushed it oh. up over top of the 15 on the Glowing Sea. All right, then we're going to say next donation on Action Mystery. Action or Mystery pushes us to the next set of polls. So if anybody's got a buck out there, you want to push it, go for it, and we'll lock them in. We'll go to the in a little donation just before that window slams shut. That's right. Dan Fetman, thank you for that uh, donation, putting us into a city with that $20 donation. Fantastic. Uh, lay 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 la lay labia four six eight two wants to know what time for nick valentine that would be 2 p.m eastern time this saturday and if you can't make that on bridge or any kind of beverage you would choose <laughs> no sit back here. relax let the dog climb up on your lap or the cat oh, yeah! or the ferret whatever you have and uh sit back and push it into mystery all right, fantastic. We're getting a mystery. Uh, thank you, uh, computer. Uh, I always butcher your name. Good, good uh, mashup there. Uh, the last one, I don't know where Parabellum is, but I know the last one just showed up. I've been meaning to go see it in the theaters, and now I might have to watch it at home. Yeah, I've, it's, I've been meaning to. I wanted to go see it at the theater, but like, I can't skip three. I got to see that, and I just couldn't find it streaming anywhere. Three was awesome, by that's, the way. That's the one with the horse, right? That's the, from the trailer. He's riding on a horse in there. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i still have to see that one but oh man i love that series uh number two discovery so it could be they're they're chasing some sort of treasure or or some tidbit of knowledge out there uh, somebody's written on the back of the declaration of independence <laughs> so we, the keanu reeves story or the nick cage story uh and then lastly atonement slash redemption so they they're guilt for something or they're or they're trying to uh uh, redeem themselves over something that happened in their past so this is going to be kind of the story that our main character pulls the player along with to help them resolve so those are our options right there donations are open we're going to do this one real quick uh because we've got uh we still got three more sets of polls i want to get i want to make sure we get to them all before you run out of time this evening Wes. so uh we'll give this one another three minutes let's see where where we end up with a uh, with story motivation so it depends. Do you want Keanu? Do you want Nick Cage? Do you want Atonement Redemption? Which would, I mean, what would that be? What's a good uh, parallel a good, for that one? A good, yeah, what's a good tale? Oh, I, I know. It's a wonderful life. You know, Jimmy Stewart there, there at the end. Redemption. <laughs> well, that's right, Clarence. That's right. Whenever a, a bell rings, a, an angel gets a hemorrhoid. <laughs> we need to go, we probably need to go younger. We need, uh, because uh, we got John Wick and National Treasure, those are both memeable. We need a we need a younger story of atonement. 
Um, mm. Let's see. I, this is where when I when my mind goes blank now. I don't know. But have you have you played around with ChatGPT? Have you are you a fan, Wes? Have you played around with that? Mm, I have not. Okay, so that is a great. It's a uh, basically. Revenge just took a five dollar hit. So let's see here. Who's our donator for Revenge? It's, it's low coming in. My uh, my little my little update thing is whoa five dollars. <laughs> Fantastic. So we, uh, so anyway, with the uh, the chat GPT, you can ask it general questions about anything, and it has like basically it's like super Google search. So it'll have uh, oh yeah all those uh, all the human knowledge locked in where where uh, you can ask it just any questions as opposed to you know sometimes you ask Google something very specific and then you just get a bunch of links you don't know what to do with. My my wife suffers from this often. She has a a, a bad case of inability to Google. Yeah, uh, well, Google watches. Google knows. <laughs> well, let's see. Great stories of atonement. Chat GPT gives us. Oh, Shawshank Redemption. That's a great one. That might still also be a little too old yeah. for some of the audience. Uh, they need to watch these things. I, they do. I, I, I agree. I agree. But uh, I mean, two movies. It's a Wonderful Life and Shawshank Redemption. I mean, strap them to a chair. I mean, this may be too old for them too. But put those little clips in their eyes like a clockwork like orange, orange and let them uh, <laughs> let them watch. I, I agree. Shawshank Redemption is in. So I, I once had to do a because um, I was I was moving to somewhere smaller. I had I used to have a, a huge DVD collection, and I um, decided that I would I would finally go digital and I'd pare myself down, and I got to keep twenty five movies for my collection. And Shawshank was like the first one because that movie is so incredible, such a great movie. Well, I mean, you could just go with a Christmas Carol. It's remade every year. That's true. That's true. There's plenty of those. But if you There's haven't a whole seen new that, one every year, yeah, yeah. What are your parents doing? <laughs> Sonic Phil was the uh, donator who put us on Revenge Pursuit. I think we just got another donation in because the overall total just jumped up. Um, but I don't see the actual. I didn't get the alert yet, so I'm not sure if you do. You see it in the chat? All right. I oh do yeah. Not. It has there, not here we go. Here we go. Holy it. cow! We got a hundred dollar donation from Anonymous. It says, "Whoa, lost my grandmother to dementia last spring." She forgot who I was years ago. This is a cruel disease that slowly stripped a strong woman of her independence, her memory, her dignity, and eventually her life. No one should suffer that way. Thank you for supporting this research. Uh, you are welcome. You are very welcome. Thank uh, you, and you're absolutely right. Absolutely Wes, we, right. we are also $500 away from smashing oh, the yeah. roof of our bowl yet again. So we're, we're $500 away from breaking 25000 in total. That is That's amazing. amazing. Fantastic. And then anonymous with the ten dollar donation to atonement redemption, and I think that's time we're gonna give that we're gonna lock that one in and go on to our next poll. So we've got our story. We're telling a tale of uh, let's let's go over the whole thing before we go to the next set of votes. So we've got a a witty character with a background of hold on I gotta I gotta bring up all these uh, things so I can view them. Uh, a background our, of sordid social diseases. <laughs> Uh, our character is it was merchant entrepreneur, and their motivate uh, the story type is a mystery. Is that oh, I got there's I have not used this poll system today. This is my first time. It's really cool though. I like this system a lot. Um, the uh, setting, yeah, I can't see any of them now that I, oh the setting is glowing sea. Okay, I figured it out. I found it. So the setting is in the glowing sea. Our story type is going to be a mystery. Really, it's, it is the glowing sea. It is I the thought, glowing uh, sea. City. The city uh, was the one that that had it at the end. Let me, Someone let me slipped refre something Let me refresh in. the page. Maybe the thing is is not up to date here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Somebody did slip it in at the last second. So let's see here. So um, our our main character archetype won by a landslide, witty, sarcastic, with 140. Then we've got our character black background raised forty dollars oh, yeah! to merchant entrepreneur. Forty. That is what's showing as for me. But if again, if this is incorrect, I will I will fix this. Post stream, we'll make sure that the, the votes counted. Settlers, we'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. That's right. We're going to be saying that a lot on Sunday too, when we have to cut corners to make the, the twelve hour deadline. Uh, we've got a thirty dollars toward a uh, settler, so that is our our faction. Our story type is a mystery, and our story uh, motivation is we just said redemption and atonement, right? So the next one we're going to do. Uh, we're going to set up, we're going to do three polls here. We'll do a five, another five minute round. Uh, we've got a, we're going to do a player home. Eleonora famed for her wonderful player homes is going to put together a player home um, that maybe it will belong to our main character, maybe not, but it's going to come about in the story as a reward to you, the player. And uh, we're going to vote on the location 
the theme and some accommodations. So uh, some extra little little bit in there. So let's uh, let's talk so about they, these. They could have a home in the glowing sea, but they may be coming from somewhere else to go to the glowing sea is what you're saying. That's right. Um, so it might be that the story starts in one place and ends up in the glowing sea or uh, we end up in there in the middle. Uh, it's kind of up for this is where we're going to leave a little creative freedom for the monitors. We don't want this. We don't want them to have no ability to, to get to get creative on the fly. Uh, this is going to be just like our starting point where we're and we're going to make sure we incorporate all these elements. It just uh, the amount is, is kind of up to the creator. So AlderWiki uh, looks like a snuck in a donation between polls there for $40. Thank you so much, AlderWiki. Really appreciate you. Thank you, AlderWiki. You rock. So let, let's talk about these latest polls. What are people voting on now? We've got the the theme of the player home. Um, and some of these will match up nicely with our, our character archetypes earlier. But we've got Fortified Bunker. So, you know, think somebody somebody who's uh, a hoarding a lot of resources and is ready for the apocalypse down there. Uh, a scientist or, or tinkerer's lab. So lots of gizmos and uh, machinery down there. A cozy home. This is, I think, what uh, Ellie is most known for making. Uh, um, a very lived-in uh, place, probably less survivalist and more just feeling like somebody's like fully established in their little little wasteland space. Uh, Something my dog Cozy would enjoy. Oh, you've got a dog named Cozy. That's fantastic. Yeah, what, with what, an S, but still. What, it's short uh, for Cosette. What, uh, what breed of dog do you got? She's a Chai Weenie. She's half uh, Dachshund, half Chihuahua. Sort of like a uh, supermodel Dachshund. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, we have a uh, uh, in some settlements. We have a, a Chihuahua. People can uh, can pick up and care, have follow them around in Fallout Four. Nah, wiener dog makes any house a home. <laughs> then and the last one on the player home theme is modern apartment. So that's going to be a little cleaner, less messy. Um, uh, that would probably end up as a slightly larger space because there will be a lot of a lot of gaps in between. So those are our themes you guys can vote on. The next is the location, as, as was pointed out. The Glowing Sea is on there. We also have a city again, either Diamond City or Good Neighbor. Uh, something downtown or something on the coast. Now, I imagine for time reasons and for just functionality in the game, all of these will be uh, inside homes, interiors. So you'll, you'll have a door somewhere that will teleport to you, you to them, whether we slap the door on a... A vanilla building that Bethesda didn't put anything in or, or, or put a bunker, like a hole in the ground somewhere, something like that. So whatever the case, we'll, we'll find a place to stick these in those spots. Uh, and then lastly, player home accommodations. That's true. Hey, people say home is where you stick it. <laughs> home is where you stick it. Or home is where your wiener dog is. The, exactly right. <laughs> the player home. And speaking of player home accommodations and wiener dogs, we've got pet friendly as one of our options. So that would be probably build a little corner for, for dog meat and, or cats to live. Um, and we can actually, we can place pets in the game and I'm sure Ellie knows how to do that. And if not, I will gladly help to maybe give you a, a, a pet that comes with the home, uh, made for two. I thought that would be something like the, like the home could be designed around the idea of you and your favorite companion who you've romanced are living together there. And then lastly, uh, a robot Butler. So the place will be spaced out a little bit. So something like a Mr. Handy or, uh, maybe a Securitron could, uh, could wander around in the home. I love my pet, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate a robot butler. <laughs> uh, a robot, yeah, oh, robot yeah! butler would be, a, would be a lot of fun. The Mister Handies, they make them look like they can do just anything for you. And they're taking right, care well, of babies, cooking, cutting, tri uh, the trimming the bushes. They're doing everything. As long as they don't mix them up, you're perfectly fine. <laughs> that's right. I think that's a quest. Actually, I think there's a quest. Trimming where, the baby. Where one of the, the Mister Handies goes nuts and and uh, and does things a little little brutally, and you find out about it reading hollow tapes and such. Um, okay, so we've got a couple donations in. We've got two large pepperoni with ten dollars toward pet friendly, saying oh, yeah! gotta be critter friendly. Next up, Neher with a ten dollar donation on the location, saying absolutely beachfront property. Yeah, the beaches are a little radiation ridden these days, but <laughs> you're gonna have Meyer Lurk neighbors, guys. And that's you're okay. definitely gonna get more than the tan. <laughs> so, what, what's your uh, background with playing Fallout? We talked about you play. Um, you played Elder Scrolls. Have you? Do you play much Fallout? 
Yeah, I played tons of Fallout. I played Fallout 3 out the wazoo. I played 4, 76. Although 76 irritated me early on because you'd go walking in and I'd be walking around trying to listen to the Protectrons here with how they interacted because I did the Protectron voices. Yeah. And somebody, some people start shooting at me to try to make me hurry up and move along. And it's like, you know, <laughs> rude, rude much. And I don't like when you first come in and you see somebody and they, sh they, they shoot you and steal all your stuff. Not ideal. That's true. The game had like PVP when it first launched, didn't it? And then yeah. They, and then they, they cut that out as they realized that wasn't that wasn't the uh, element for most players. It seems like a real friendly community in the Fallout 76 area. It's gotten It's gotten so much better. It's gotten so much better. The community in Fallout 76 is made up of just incredibly wonderful souls. And uh, we did a thing last year. Ken set this thing up where we all went out to the uh, Capitol and we went up to the Lincoln Memorial, and there were about a hundred of us all dressed up in uh, Fallout gear. I was dressed as the Silver Shroud, and we oh, yeah! all marched our way from the Lincoln Memorial out to the Washington Monument and planted our flag. It was fantastic. Oh, that's amazing! That is that is a great little event. Was that a was that for a charity drive as well, or was that just for fun? Um, oh yeah, Ken, was that what, what was that one for? I wonder if Ken is still out there somewhere. <laughs> Uh, I there am still is. lurking. Yeah. That was for the Fallout 25th anniversary, the cosplay yes. meetup that we did in uh, four cities, I think. No, three cities. Yeah. Yeah, but we were the only one that had a celebrity deli, and we had a <laughs> we, we had a breakfast at the celebrity that's, deli. That's and very they, true. They put together these interactive menus on uh, a computer, little little uh, iPads that we got to order from that looked like they were on a Pip Boy. Oh, that's and awesome. And they had like. They had like Meyer Lurk, uh, uh, Benedicts. They had uh, uh, stim packs, which were really kind of mimosas, but shh. And <laughs> it, it was fantastic. It was themed, and all these people sitting around this deli, dressed like Fallout, eating all this food, then boarding onto the metros that were used in the game to make oh, our way downtown awesome. to DC to do our march. That was a heck of a day. There had to be some great photos from that, especially from that diner scene. Oh, it was fun. Photos, video. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, computer says no, votes $10 towards Scientist Tinker's Lab, putting that. Oh, and then we just had it's followed up. to up. 40 now. Oh, Somebody yeah. popped in there. Uh, Zingio with a $30 donation towards Scientist Tinker's Lab. Glad to contribute. Have fun with the modding. Thank you, Zinjio. Appreciate you. And Sonic Phil, sorry, you've been outvoted. You put in uh, $5 on Fortified Bunker, but it looks like Scientist Tinker's Lab is taking it because we are moving to the next set of polls here. And staying pet friendly, by the way. Pet, pet friendly. Uh, let's see, we've got pet friendly on the coast, a scientist tinkers lab. So let's close those down. All right, so the next piece of the mod we're going to have made uh, is some armor from Nero. Nero has built mm. some incredible armor for Fallout 4. He's been largely retired for quite a while now. Um, I don't know if you're watching Nero and you want to correct me on that, if maybe you've been doing stuff and I didn't notice. Uh, coming back and is going to uh, make some armor. So we've got two things to vote on. Uh, around the armor and that is going to be the style and the type so the type would be whether it's clothing so like something you wear uh you know generally like we see in front of us we've got uh, mo cronin's clothing we've got the uh shiograth outfit we've got the voice of blue shirt like clothing like that something we're underneath or some armor so it could be helmet gauntlets boots some combination of the two he he's, he was very concerned about whether how much armor he could do in a single 12 hour stream so we'll see how much he can pull off and then lastly it would be accessories that'd be like things like bandoliers belts um goggles stuff like that so you get to choose what type of armor and then armor style. So uh, makeshift post-war is going to look like uh, the classic like raider armor type of stuff. The things you you see a lot of cosplayers do. Futuristic sci-fi could be something like uh, uh, the vault suits or the institute outfits. And then something modern realistic would be for those of you guys who are way into like the military look. Uh, so we've got some options there for, for style and the type that you want to see Nero build. And I'm sure he will put together. He always works. He's known for... Uh, taking awesome pieces of concept art and bringing them to life in Fallout 4. Um, and I imagine he'll find some cool cool concepts out there matching your guys' requests and turn them into a, a real thing, and you'll get to watch all Well, that. I'd be a sucker for some futuristic sci-fi armor pieces. I mean, I just might wear them around the house. <laughs> are you uh, are you looking forward to Starfield? I think I saw you tweet about it.
about it. You you are you are ready. Yeah, I'm, I want to I can't wait to play. I mean, putting it in 4K up on the big 65-inch screen on the couch. Yeah, I'm going to space, man. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, that that's part of why I uh, two I have two reasons I always play on console with Bethesda games. One is uh the giant screen. That's always nice uh over a yeah. computer. And then the second one is I I get in a different zone. If I'm sitting at a computer with a mouse and keyboard, I feel like I need to be working. And so like when I'm on the couch with a, with right. a controller, it's chill time. There's no, there's you know, no one's coming in to, to get into my little headspace. As you were saying earlier, you want to yeah. dial into that world and, and just feel a part of it until it's, until the sun comes up. Right. Immersiveness. Yeah. And, and for me, uh, Morrowind, I played on uh PC, just like I played fallout one and fallout two on the PC. But, you know, there's something about when you're hunched over your monitor in the keypad or you're sitting back on the couch and you can put it in a Barca lounger position and just disappear into the whole thing. No, there's no contest comfort wise. And I'm all about the comfort. Yeah, it feels really good. Yeah, the, yeah. when you can get rid of all your, uh, uh, you don't feel your body anymore because it's so relaxed. It's all the way, all the better way to get immersed into the game. Get oh, yeah. In there. Uh, yeah, and 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 I, you know, of course, there's also the uh, stereo surround sound bars and things of that mm -hmm. sort. Now, this is not popular with my wife, <laughs> who uh, at a certain point the theme songs of different games become. She starts hearing it, and she you can almost hear in the back room. Oh no! <laughs> uh, I still to this day every time a game like a game because they always put the the. Um, I, I've heard that Todd likes to first establish the the theme song or like the the musical tone of his games and like he, he you can tell because every time like i hear one of the theme songs from one of those games i haven't played in a while just the nostalgia feels just grab me so yeah hard. right like today you know, well i i pulled up a uh, morrowind and listening to the old morrowind theme although i gotta say playing that on the xbox series x I would love to see that fixed a little bit because uh, <laughs> the buttons are never where you expect them to be. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird, but. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see with some of the, um, I don't know how, how much you follow tech, but NVIDIA put out this thing where uh, they can upscale old games with AI. And uh, it would be really cool to see if they could do something like that with those games where, like I think Bethesda said, they're not interested in, in upscaling uh, right. Morrowind. It would be really cool to see a, a modernized version of that. Mm -hmm. Clothing just uh, clothing oh, yeah! and uh, makeshift post war just took some uh, some well, loading there. That's fantastic because we've only got uh, one more minute left on those two polls. So computer says no with five dollars toward makeshift post war and anonymous with a twenty dollars oh, yeah! donation toward clothing. So we're looking at clothing. some makeshift post war clothing. So that would be uh, a lot like the you know the under stuff, so stuff you could put some armor pieces on top of. That's actually one of my favorite ways. I love the the Fallout aesthetic of just wearing like whatever random stuff you could find. I remember the first right. the first thing I found in '76 out of the vault was a piece of wood armor, and I'm like, I am never taking this off because it's so funny. Like just right. the, that is the ultimate like janky makeshift thing you could do: grab a slab of bark and put it on your shoulder. Uh, fantastic. That's uh. So we're going to see some makeshift post-war clothing. there was clothing. a question. There was a question. Someone yeah. asked me if uh, I knew the actors for Mirak and uh, and uh, Lord Harkon. I have met Mirak. That is Peter Jessup, who's a fantastic actor, also played Paladin Dance. Uh, and in fact, uh, Peter is reprising Paladin Dance in the radio program coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern Time Saturday. So you'll want to you want to hear him there. He's awesome. Uh, Neil Dixon is the guy who plays Lord Harkon, and I have not met him sadly. And maybe that would be a fun thing to do someday. But uh, uh, yeah, Mirak and Hermaeus Mora are pals. So there we go. We cannot <laughs> hype this Fallout Four event enough. That is uh, that looks so cool. I cannot wait to to tune into that. Did you see even even the stuff that uh, uh, was put together for the graphics? Um, that that uh kenneth did and are on a video just a little slide video with just the graphics he did makes everything look so wonderful he's he's a magician yeah ken you've got some talent with the uh with the graphic design and you when we were working on the c3 stuff you busted out a cool little logo for us and felt like in like 20 minutes it was uh pretty impressive uh, sorry, impressive I was, i'm multitasking at the moment <laughs> that's all good as you, when are you never multitasking ken? <laughs> you're, you're multitasking always 
I'm in the middle of uh, scoring, scoring, uh, you know, the thing we have to have done yeah. for Saturday. Yeah, fair enough. All right, we'll we'll let you be at that. All right, so we're gonna close out <laughs> the clothing poll. So or the armor I'll just pole. say I'll just say that when you get there, you're going to really enjoy the very very classy ad we have for Giddy Up Buttercup. So and you know, oh no, of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right, so this is gonna be our final set of polls for the night, uh, and that'll put us uh, put us right around six forty five. So a good uh, good hour and a half of uh, fundraising. So we're, how close are we, Ken? Sorry, one more time to bother you. How close are we to breaking the record? Can we, maybe we can do it under these last set of polls or breaking the, the 25K goal. Somebody can see that, I imagine. Nope, he disappeared. He's got to get into the writer's zone. All right, so the last bit we're doing here is we're going to vote on a weapon. Neher has uh, done polls like this on his YouTube channel, and he's going to do one for this event on Sunday, uh, basically where he's going to make a weapon and we get to choose the, what type of weapon. So pistol, shotgun, rifle, or heavy weapon. The, like a fat boy, the heavy weapon? Yeah, heavy weapon can be a, a, a fat man. Oh, it's so funny that you said fat boy. Um, we, have a, we have a fantastic Batman, inside. Sorry. No, it's okay because we have this amazing inside joke on, uh, in the Sim Sodoms community with fat boy. So you, you just made a lot of people laugh. Um, he, yeah, heavy weapon could be a rocket launcher, a fat man, a grenade launcher, a minigun, something like that. Uh, next, we've got the weapon style. So is it the classic Fallout style? You know, they're not quite realistic. They're, they're a mix of metal and wood because they're trying to keep that kind of 50s aesthetic to them. Um, a scrappy homemade, that's that stuff. Somebody in the post-war jury rigged a bunch of stuff together and got themselves a weapon. Uh, futuristic in Institute. So if you like that 50s sci-fi flair, the Institute. Or right you can weapons. find it off a spaceship. Exactly. They're out there. The aliens, too. Yeah, the aliens. It's, I mean, that's one of the coolest things about the Fallout franchise is basically nothing's off limits. They've got mm -hmm. aliens in there, monsters. There's some like there's some paranormal stuff. So you've got a little. You can find the TARDIS in one of the games, right? In one of the old games, man. I love the uh, the amount of stuff or memories I have from Fallout Two. Such a great game. Mm. It's hard to play again. Have you tried playing any of the old Fallout's again? The, the top-down turn-based stuff. When you're playing it, your imagination goes wild with it. Yeah. And then going back to some of those old things after you're so used to seeing everything so cinematically, it's yeah. it is hard. It's very hard. It's just such a bummer because I have so many fond memories of those like that. I mean, the reason I got so into Fallout Four modding is just the the massive nostalgia of uh, playing Fallout Two, like in my like my gaming prime, like that was like as a teenager, that was my jam. Uh, and so like now, now I'm just obsessed with Fallout as an adult. So, now, real Eleanor, is that a comma or a period? There, she says we're three hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty cents away from twenty-five thousand. Now, is that three hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty cents away, or is it <laughs> is is that a comma there? Because that would put us what uh $39,330 away. I hope we're not $39,000 away from a 25,000 goal. We would somebody, somebody failed would have misspent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, somebody that was a failed. Big horribly. fail. <laughs> big fail. Uh, so so under we're under $400 from breaking the $2,500. 25,000. Let's do it guys. Come on. We got three polls to vote on. Let's go hard on weapons. Uh we've got Oh, our first one. We've got energy. Energy weapon. So the last one we didn't talk about is the damage type. We can do a ballistic, so it'd be just classic bullets. Uh energy weapon, so that could be fusion or uh plasma. Mm -hmm. Explosive, if you want if you want to see something explode, you want some bombs, some grenades. Uh and then radiation. Uh, that's a unique type of uh, damage oh, in Fallout yeah! 4. So we've got uh insane... the radiation weren't as satisfying, I think. You know, the the energy were great. You can melt somebody, that's yeah. fantastic. The explosives always fun. Yeah. Uh ballistic is still oh, good. Yeah! Ballistic's in the lead right now with ten dollars. That's right, insane pixels with that ten dollar donation and Sonic Phil. Also with a five dollar donation, Sonic, you're having bad luck. That's twice now. Somebody somebody came in there and sniped your boat. Um, Insane Pixels with the lead on ballistic damage, uh, but yeah, I think I agree with you. Radiation is the most disappointing. I think it's most disappointing to fight against. It's terrifying to watch the your max it, health drop so so precipitously. Right, but it, but I mean, watching your health when you're hit with it, that's one thing. You can see the effects of it. Yeah, shooting somebody else with it, you don't know what they're doing. That you're not getting that good. Right. satisfying fallout uh slow motion exploding head <laughs> bopping melting away i do like the energy weapons a lot yeah it's a yeah it is a shame that they don't they have are some special effect on the radiation that would have made them more fun to watch uh you melt what your are, enemies with mm, what about what are, what are the little hand saw chainsaw things uh what the, are those the, the ripper 
the little little the hand ripper. Tinsel. I love the ripper. So yeah, I so originally I had had uh, melee on the weapon type and. Uh, Nier said, well, that would be kind of boring because you're just swinging a stick. And I was like, oh, what about the Ripper or like a, yeah. a, a power sledge? And he's like, well, I don't actually know how to make those yet. So, uh, okay. So for because we're we're doing this. Well, energy's oh, up yeah! to 25 now. Oh, energy taking the lead. Sergio with a $20 donation on energy. Fantastic. Thank you, Sergio. The um, what we what we realized uh, when we did some of these tests for speed modding is yeah. there is no room for trying things you don't know how to do yet. Like if we're going right. to build a mod in Not 12 in the hours, speed. right. Not we we got to stick to what we know. Um, so he played it safe there. We, we, we axed melee at the last minute. So that didn't make the pull. Uh, but yeah, Ripper, such a cool weapon. Um, and the way they did the weapons in fallout four, man, what an upgrade from fallout three and in, in new Vegas. They're just, they're so satisfying with all right. the animations. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, th this is uh, well, I've been reading that some of the folks who did some of the, uh, the, the, the battle stuff and upgraded the battle stuff for fallout four are now working with, uh, this is just something I read, but, uh, th that are now working with, um, um, star, my brain, <laughs> that's right starfield starfield okay oh yeah yeah we've got a uh, up, double up the, up the fighting and that yeah yeah they I, th I mean i think i think that's one of the things fallout 4 is most praised for is how good its gunplay is and the fact that you get to customize yeah. it all it's it's really cool oh, um, yeah! speaking of which we got to customize one of these here somebody has to put a vote down on uh yeah what kind of a weapon this is weapon type we got a split shotgun and heavy weapon even win so Ooh, yeah from two and oh there we go donators. Oh, what do we Classic get? Classic Fallout just took 20. So there we oh, go. Yeah! Fantastic. We still have a tie between shotgun and heavy weapon. We are in the lead with the, the classic Fallout metal wood weapon style. And energy uh, is at 25. So that's going to be an interesting thing. A Fallout energy, a wooden metal energy weapon. That will be interesting. I don't think we have anything like that. Can you, somebody in chat will correct me and tell me I'm an idiot. But um, the, uh, uh, there's, yeah, I don't think, I can't think of any weapon that's got that aesthetic with energy. That should be really interesting. Like a, a wooden plasma weapon, like that, that could be kind of cool. Now, Kobus wants it to be an energy shotgun, please, and is requesting somebody put the money down on a shotgun, <laughs> but it's tied with heavy weapon right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, reinforcements with that uh, uh, $20 nation says, uh, Oblivion Imperial Guards are authority incarnate. Halt, criminal scum. Your stolen forks are now forfeit. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I, I am envious of uh, voice actors who can uh, bust out a character voice and make everybody smile. That's such a cool, huh. that's a cool superpower. Well, if you say that in a grocery line, it really gets people anal. I've <laughs> that, go with that particular line. Stop uh, right there, citizen. What? What? Who? What? <laughs> has, what's is there? Do you, is there any line like that that you enjoy shouting in a crowded room, like uh, an odd voice thing, or or when you I detect like just, there might I, be a fan nearby? I like just coming up and whispering something like. I don't create rumors, oh, dear yeah! child. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I don't spread rumors, dear child. I create them. Oh, that is that is fantastic. That is, uh, that's a little chilling, too. Nice to look oh, yeah. yeah. That line, unfortunately, one of, that was like one of my favorite lines ever. Ever. And if you install Knights of the Nine, yeah. it gets overwritten with a voice going, I heard rumor of a prophet. And it's like, what, Lucian? You're talking about some other person's religion? What's going on? Oh, no. Somebody botched Damn up the conditioning. No. <laughs> There's got Ooh, the shotgun just took a, a little shotgun pump. I wonder if there is. Oh, no. My uh, my PayPal thing came up. I It won't be me donating. Shh. Uh oh, <laughs> that's that's not cheating. That's allowed. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Let's see where I'm gonna vote right now, cause I want to see I want to see us break I want to see us break that 25. Let's do it. Oh yeah! Yeah, let's yeah. let's keep it going, guys. Let's, let's going. keep it going. Let's see here. Where are we where are we at here? So I think I just uh, I think I just cemented us in energy because I threw a little donation in myself. All right, so we've got energy weapon, shotgun, classic Fallout style is where we're where we're sitting at right now. Yeah, and the energy weapon. I mean, we're up at seventy five dollars. Anybody want to push that up twenty five, and we'll just get a hundred on energy. I think that <laughs> that will top it out right there. That would definitely that would definitely put us in there. Um, we're, I we're... think it's I think it's safely in the lead, but you know, hey, yeah, yeah. How close are we? I'm I'm like I'm str I'm stalling here, trying to get us to hit that twenty five k mark because I know we're that close. 
but uh, we are we are definitely running over time here. So I thank you, Wes, for uh, for joining us. Wes, before we close out, and we'll let people continue to vote up till the end. Um, do you want? You should speak to the charity. I feel like we've talked. We've had a lot of fun talking about our favorite games, some of your history in the industry. But uh, let's talk about why we're really here. Well, why we are here is because uh, of all the bads that you've faced in every game. Uh, yeah, Alzheimer's disease is the biggest bad of them all. I mean, look at that. The real Eleonora just said we're at twenty four thousand seven hundred sixty six dollars and seventy cents. Oh my god! So, so we're close. closing in. It's so close. The reason we're donating funds right now is because there are people out there, and it could be someone in your family. I, odds are it is someone in your family who's dealt with this, who's had Alzheimer's, who's had dementia, where you lose the people you love before you lose them. Their memories go. Their personalities change. They become combative, or they disappear right in front of your eyes. The The, the fact that this thing doesn't just tear apart the memories and the life of someone taking away everything they ever were or everything they ever will be, but also destroys families along the way is because where do you find the support in caretaking for people in your world that you can keep them at home for a while, but that's hard on the family. It's hard on you. You can't go to work. You can't leave them at home. My mother would set things on fire. This Once she Jeez. went out in the yard not wearing anything, you know, um, she used to get in a car and drive up to the McDonald's when she still was able to have her car, order food, eat the food on the way home, get home, see a bag, open the bag, see it was empty, get mad, go back up to the drive through and start yelling at the people at McDonald's saying they ripped her off. And eventually they got, they were like, fine lady, just give her another hamburger. She, her fridge was stuffed with more bags from McDonald's than Dahmer's had heads in it. It was, it was a, a horrifying thing. Listen, it changes people. It, 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 it shatters families. And where do they turn? They turn to the Alzheimer's association they can, they don't always, they don't know. People don't know. You feel lost. You feel completely lost. That's why we have people reaching out to ALZ.org, calling the 24-7 hotline, because being able to talk to somebody who gets it, who understands, who can point you in the right direction, help get you somebody who can help care for your, your family member, can help get you to a memory center, can help you cope in a time when coping is difficult. Not only that, they're working constantly to research for a cure. And every day, strides are being made. They've come up with a new medication that allows people to stay themselves for even longer, even longer. But unfortunately, they are not. Medicare will not pay for it at this point. And the, they were, we're trying to get the government to allow this to happen, to start paying for it, because they pay for all sorts of other drugs, but they will not subsidize this, not right now. And there isn't an outcry because people have been quiet. It's almost like a quiet shame when you have a family member who's going through Alzheimer's or going through dementia. You don't want people to know what kind of trouble and stress and strain and heartache is going on in your home. But... We need that drug to be available to people. And so they're working and lobbying and trying to get that done. They're working for research to try to get a cure. Your dollars are going to help families right here and right now, the caretakers. Your money, the the, the, the $10, the $5, the $20, $100, whatever you give is going to search for a cure, is going to get drugs into the hands of people who need it, is going to make life better for people during the worst time of their lives. And we're doing all this, we're looking for funds via fun. We're using life to help support life. And that's why we donate. That's why we're so grateful to everything that everybody has done. And we're grateful to you for this opportunity to do this and to do this panel and to raise these funds. Uh, you know, guys, this stuff's going to be going on right now. If you go to voice, of, if you go to streamily.com forward slash voice of Palooza, you'll find headshots from a ton of different voice actors that they will sign and personalize with all the funds going to the Alzheimer's Association. We've got all these panels coming up this weekend. You guys are going to be working on mods all through the week. We're going to be doing this stuff through the end of the month. 
and pushing this. It, it, it's all for the longest day for the Alzheimer's Association. The longest day is when you get the most light, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to shine light on something good. And in this world where there's so many things right now that are hard and are bad, what this gaming community has been doing to help people out of the kindness of their heart, uh, it, it, it leaves me a man who speaks for a living speechless, and I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you, Wes, for hosting this event. I uh, I have fortunately not had to go through what you've gone through, and you know I, I feel every time as so I've watched a few of your streams, and I and I always want to I wanted to make sure you had an opportunity to tell your story, but I, I can't imagine it's uh, it doesn't hurt to keep retelling it. Um, but thanks for sharing that with but what, us. What 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 hurts, uh, Josh, is that it it keeps happening. You know, it happened to my grandmother, happened to my mother, happened to my uncle, my 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 brother's mother-in-law just passed a month ago from it. And now my aunt, who, as I said earlier today, was the one in the family who was always sort of the crazy one. She had the Shea Gorath. She's the person that Robin Williams was talking about. You know, you must keep a little bit of madness. Never lose that. Well, she didn't. Oh, yeah. But now she's losing everything. It's all slipping away. And so do you do you remain helpless? Do you do nothing or do you fight? And we've chosen to fight. Can definitely get behind that. Um I have uh I've I've seen some family who are who just show the the signs of of losing uh kind of their uh nothing like Alzheimer's, but you know, just starting to forget things and even that's hard. So like the yeah, Alzheimer's is worst nightmare fuel. Um I, I do not envy anyone having to go through that. Uh, and that's why for me this was a no-brainer to be a part of this charity and we are um we're glad to have you it was really fun to talk with you and uh here's some impressions of our favorite characters um we hope (laughs) to raise uh, a lot more money for the charity this sunday we're going to be streaming for 12 hours straight and you have a ton of events still coming up Uh, if you got i will uh, link that in the chat there's uh, a a whole set of events on the follow-up oh yeah voice of palooza section where people can find out about additional events uh we did right you can even just go to voice of palooza.com if you want to and check things out there but falloutforhope.com voice of palooza.com let me tell you something fallout for hope that just shows you what what wonderful souls the uh, gaming community are because uh, with ken's support and the support of gamers streamers all around the globe they're closing in on half a million dollars raised for good causes over the past three years and that's something that's awesome there is good in this world man there's that's good amazing. in this world we had few a couple of last minute donations before we wrap up here knee her with 25 dollars uh, near her making the weapon, maybe, maybe trying to also steer what we're making. Uh, and then Mush 2023 with a $20 donation. So I Fantastic. think. Thank you. Mush has been, been coming through big time all night. So we didn't quite get to the 25K, but I think you guys are going to get there tomorrow because you've got more events coming up. Uh, why don't we mention those one more time before we roll out, and then I will let you go for the night. And then I'm going to get together with my team so we can start planning this beast of a mod we got to create. <laughs> so what's, what's the well, event tomorrow again? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow uh, on for Voice of Palooza, uh, Fallout for Hope Charity of Initiative at uh, 4 p.m. There will be an Elder Scrolls Online dev drive. And that is going to be on the, uh, I believe, uh, Ken, is that is that not going to be on the uh, Chad Fallout 76 uh, podcast? Uh, sorry, I missed the first part and only heard my name. <laughs> uh, the ESO dev dive. Is that going to be George? Where is that going to be? Zero period productions on Twitch. Zero period productions on Twitch is where you're going to go tomorrow at 4 p.m. And you're going to get a chance to hear from all of the devs about ESO. You have any questions about that? And especially Necrom uh, Shadow Over Morrowind, which is going to be releasing on cons or excuse me, on uh uh, the computer will be releasing on PC on the 5th and then on consoles on the 20th. And you're going to want to check that out. There's some loser playing uh, Hermaeus Mora that you might <laughs> like to find out more about. So I'll be there. All the devs will be there. We're going to have a blast. Then on Saturday, Saturday is going to be a big day for Voice of Palooza. We've got the radio program, and that's three solid hours of just 
epic entertainment that starts at 2 p.m., followed by Whose Apocalypse Is It Anyway, where you will hear improv being done by folks like Zach Ward from A Christmas Story, uh, Ellen McLean, Johns, Patrick Lowry, Jan Johns. Uh, it's going to be just a whole lot of fun. I think Paul Guyette is going to be there as well. And uh, you're going, Kenny. Are you going to be running that one there? Are you going to be moderating this as you normally do? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, those last two we're doing. Yeah, and uh, then we're going to be doing the Voice of Palooza on uh, Sunday. Voice of Palooza is going to start at six p. Or excuse me, five p.m. on Sunday, and that will lead us right up into the mod reveal, mm -hmm. uh, which will be epic as well. And then Monday, Labor Day. We're going to have a uh, an encore performance of the radio program. So you're going to want to check all these things out. It's wall to wall fun and exhaustion for Ken and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! All right, so the so your mod guys that we're going to be building, we're going to start this Sunday morning at eight Eastern. We're going to go for twelve hours straight. We're going to have a main character who's witty and sarcastic, with a background of being a merchant or entrepreneur. He's uh, a settler, so not affiliated with any particular faction. The story is going to be a mystery tale of redemption in the glowing sea. And then we've, of course, got the, your votes for the player, home, the armor, and the weapon. Our team's going to get to work planning this out, and we will see you guys Sunday bright and early. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Wes. Take care. Thank you.